Member FDIC. Have you wanted... Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. Not on our watch. In real life, you can fill your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols, and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery is running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We can't in real life. Brent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. What if your email was organized by project and not by date? What if everyone looked at the same thing instead of their own inbox? Then it wouldn't be email at all. Forget your fragmented jumbled inbox and make the change to channels in Slack. Spaces dedicated to individual projects, topics, or teams. All your communication is neatly organized and everyone is on the same page. Slack. Choose a better way to work. Get started at slack.com. <coughs> Listen up, it's the head teacher here. Please pay attention. We need you all to collect as many books for school's tokens and the sun as possible. When we've got three and a half thousand, the school will get over six hundred pounds worth of free books. If you don't, it's detention. Start collecting books for schools, tokens, and the sun today. T's and C's apply. For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, shop small. small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small. Only by American Express. Television. Here's Taylor Riggs. Imagine a database somewhere that had all of your social media accounts, email addresses, and phone numbers. Well, that is what one cybersecurity expert discovered last month. All that data for 1.2 billion people just sitting out there on a Google Cloud server. But how did it get there, and what was it being used for? To answer that, let's head over to St. Louis, where the man who uncovered the server is standing by. It's Vinny Troya, the founder of Data Viper. Vinny, I have have to ask a very basic question how did you discover this uh, to be honest this is just part of a normal research process where we were just looking through open web servers to look for any uh, databases that potentially have valuable information in them how does this breach if you will fit into all of the other data breaches that you've discovered in terms of size and scope we hear a billion people and we sort of freak out where does that fit in in your world so I would say this is probably among, uh, you know, it's one of the largest that I've probably ever discovered, maybe largest that anyone has. Um, it was so large in size that the initial size that we uncovered was actually 4 billion records. And once we started to deduplicate a lot of what we found, we kind of whittled that number down to 1.2 billion, which is actually fairly significant. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app. Or check your local cable listings, markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. This update brought to you by IBKR and CME Group. The new micro e mini futures contracts are available at IBKR at the lowest commissions. Learn more at IBKR.com slash CME Mini. And futures are higher this morning. S&P futures up seven points. Dow futures up 74. NASDAQ futures up 29. The DAX in Germany is up four tenths percent. Ten-year treasury down five thirty seconds. Yield 1.78 percent. Yield on the two-year 1.63 percent. NYMEX crude oil little changed at 57.77 a barrel. Comex gold down four tenths percent or five dollars sixty cents at fourteen sixty four ninety an ounce. The euro one point one zero one three against the dollar yen one oh eight point eight four. That's a Bloomberg business flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael. Thank you very much, Karen. Defense Secretary Mark Asper has fired the Secretary of the Navy in connection with the controversy over a seal whose case has been championed by President Trump. The Pentagon spokesman says that Esper has lost trust and confidence in Navy Secretary Richard Spencer. Turkey will test a component of its newly acquired Russian air defense system. In the NFL, the Jets won against the Raiders. The Giants lost. Patriots 49ers and Redskins won. The Ravens are at the Rams tonight. Nets beat the Knicks. Wizards lost in the NBA. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts, more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg, Nathan.
Thanks, Michael. It's just before 619 on Wall Street. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak. Let's get set up for the trading day and week ahead. A holiday shortened week, but lots to get to this morning. Joining us from New York, Madeline Lim, executive editor of Breaking News for Bloomberg News. In London, we have executive editor Heather Harris with us. And in Beijing, we're pleased to have managing editor Emma O'Brien. And uh, Madeline, let's start with you. Lots of deals uh, in the news this morning, including the one that just crossed the Bloomberg term terminal in the brokerage sector. Indeed, Schwab to buy TD Ameritrade. Um, the deal was sort of mooted last week and has now um, been officially confirmed for about $26 billion dollars and it's going to create an industry giant with about five trillion in assets it more than doubles schwab's brokerage account boosts its custody service brings it an active trader platform it's going to be a real industry giant there and um it, even as this comes as you will recall schwab um earlier this year sort of did away with brokerage with um trading fees for uh, for on its trading platform. So all these things for U.S. stock trading, so all these things together are just putting Schwab in a, in a leading position in an industry that is seeing a lot of turmoil and has seen a lot of consolidation, and that's likely to continue because cost savings in this industry are huge, right? You can combine technology and back office. You can cross-sell products. So it does really bring in a lot, a, a, a lot of... Um, um, push its position and um, could but could also at the same time uh, attract regulatory attention. Now, before the Schwab TD deal hit the print, Heather Harris, we thought the uh, LVMH Tiffany merger was going to be the biggest story we were talking about this morning. Yeah, so this has obviously been highly, highly anticipated for a number of weeks now. In fact, it was Bloomberg News that first broke this story about three weeks ago. Um, they finally agreed on a price. LVMH agreeing to pay $135 a share for Tiffany or $16.2 billion in total. LVMH um, Chief Executive Ben Arnault has been talking to our Paris Bureau Chief this morning, and he says they're going to do to Tiffany what they did to Bulgari when they bought that luxury jewellery brand um, a few years ago. And this acquisition, Tiffany, will double LVMH's sizes in this, in this business. Of course, they all already have many fashion um, brands, but this is getting big in jewellery, and he sees huge potential, particularly in China. Now, the big deal that remains up in the air, as it has for uh, weeks, if not months now, Emma O'Brien, is between the U.S. and China on trade. But Beijing has made a concession this morning. Yeah, I mean, it feels like another day, another step forward, uh, or sometimes back in the trade war. Um, over the weekend, as you said, Beijing appeared to go some ways to meeting President Trump's long-standing concerns over intellectual property violations. China said it will boost the penalties for IP theft and look at lowering the bar for people or companies to be criminally punished here for thieving IP. This still, of course, leaves a number of big issues to resolve, among them forced tech trade transfer, uh, opening up of China's financial system, but it uh, does seem like progress. And uh, Heather Harris, let's go back to you because there are big questions in London this morning, uh, renewed questions perhaps about whether you or anybody else in the city is going to be able to catch an Uber in the uh, near future. Yeah, that's right. Big blow for Uber announced this morning the Transport for London regulator saying that it doesn't think that Uber has gone far enough to address its concerns over passenger safety and therefore will not be granted a new license. Now, Uber does have... 21 days to appeal. A magistrate's court will rule on that within that time frame. Um, but this is pretty bad news. I mean, they've had a long time to address these concerns. So if they still haven't done so, it does make you wonder whether this is still going to be something that Londoners can use going forward. 45,000 drivers licensed in London. So obviously a huge deal also for people trying to get around and indeed for employment in the middle of a general election season. And speaking of elections, Emma O'Brien, the district council elections in Hong Kong are in the books and big results for pro-democracy candidates. That's right. Pretty amazing election result in Hong Kong over the weekend. Not only was there uh, by far record turnout for the district council vote, but candidates representing pro-democracy parties and groups won 85% of the seats, up from about a quarter uh, the last time they voted. 
Now, these may be only, as I said, district council elections, considered probably the lowest rung of government in the city, but the message was loud and clear and will put pressure, I think, on Carrie Lamb's administration to, to consider the protesters' demands, which include uh, the ability to nominate and elect the person in her job. Uh, a pretty big ask. And uh, Madeline Lim, uh, talking of pressure, activist investor Carl Icahn is certainly living up to that moniker when it comes to Occidental Petroleum. Indeed, a very colorful letter he sent to his fellow shareholders, and he's also um, reportedly going to uh, nominate 10 directors um, before the November 29 deadline. We'll see whether that happens. But he has always been a very vocal critic of Oxy's uh, app. Uh, acquisition of Anadarko saying it just over leveraged the company, required too much very expensive debt and now he wants to do something about it. Madeline Lim, executive editor for Breaking News uh, for Bloomberg News. Thank you for being with us along with uh, executive head editor Heather Harris in London and Bloomberg News managing editor Emma O'Brien with us from Beijing this morning. Thanks to all three of you for being with us here on Bloomberg Daybreak. Right now, S&P futures are higher by seven points. Dow futures up 70 NASDAQ futures, a gain of almost 28 points. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. Charles Schwab is buying TD Ameritrade with a price tag of $26 billion. It's an all-stock deal, and combined, the brokerage firms are projected to create a $5 trillion powerhouse. And that's not the only mega merger deal today. Louis Vuitton owner LVMH is buying the iconic U.S. luxury jeweler Tiffany for $16 billion, the largest ever deal in the luxury sector. Stock futures pointing to a higher open on this Monday ahead of Thanksgiving. Investors are assessing China's decision to tighten intellectual property rules. That move could increase the chances of a trade deal between the U.S. and China. Fed Chair Jay Powell delivers some public remarks today. Day at the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce in Rhode Island. Stocks rose Friday on trade optimism. It was a slightly negative week overall. S&P futures up 8, Dow futures up 79. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Hey y'all, Jeff Foxworthy here. Now if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up. Because there's a lot more to say. And I should know because my grandfather was a firefighter. And one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires. Which means always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Why has J.D. Power... <clears throat> Listen up, it's the head teacher here. Please pay attention. We need you all to collect as many books for schools, tokens, and the sun as possible. When we've got three and a half thousand, the school will get over 600 pounds worth of free books. If you don't, it's detention. Start collecting books for schools, tokens, and the sun today. T's and C's apply. TSB Local Pride celebrates incredible stories of people helping people up and down the country. I'm Jenny Falconer, and let me introduce you to Richard. Richard, what's Depth Therapy all about? I was one of the founders of Depth Therapy in 2014. What we do is seek to rehabilitate UK armed service veterans who suffered life-changing mental and or physical challenges working with these guys underwater and teaching them how to scuba dive. It's actually seeing people's lives change who've become very lost and managing to change their lives for the better and in some cases save their lives is really our main achievement. Depth Therapy is using groundbreaking scuba diving therapy to help service personnel and veterans with trauma. TSB are proud to share stories like these of people helping people and to partner Pride of Britain. To find out more, search TSB Local Pride. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. 
See smarty.co.uk for terms. At Little, we're big on all those Christmas parties. The season to be jolly. Try our party time Indian snack selection for only two ninety nine, and our party time mac and cheese bites for just one ninety. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, select the stores excluding and I. If you're planning on driving this weekend, expect delays on the A406 North Circular Road. There'll be road closures between Tottenham and Edmonton from 10pm on Friday the 22nd of November to 5am on Monday the 25th of November while we carry out essential maintenance and repairs. All roads in the surrounding area will be extremely busy so please allow more time for your journey and expect delays in the area. Plan ahead and check alternative routes at tfl.gov.uk. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. My name's Ian and I run the Christmas Centres for Crisis. Many people in Britain are homeless, stuck in hostels, sleeping on floors, even on the street. You can change this. Our Christmas centres provide people with food, safety and support and show them how crisis can help them find a home and a job in the year ahead. You can reserve a place at crisis this Christmas for just £28.87. Go to crisis.org.uk now. Help someone take their first step out of homelessness this Christmas. Thank you. Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. It is 630 on Wall Street. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. We're just about three hours away from the opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date on the news you need to know at this hour. Stocks are rising around the world as the latest move from China may help ease trade tensions with the U.S. Beijing says it will raise penalties on those who steal intellectual property. Bloomberg Daybreak Asia anchor Brian Curtis has more from Hong Kong. This is one of the sticking points in trade talks with the United States. These guidelines aim to stop frequent violations by 2022 and make it easier for victims to get compensation. China will also look at lowering the thresholds for criminal punishment for those who steal IP. The U.S. wants China to commit to cracking down on IP theft, and this is a step in that direction. In Hong Kong, Brian Curtis, Bloomberg Daybreak. Thank you, Brian. Also in Hong Kong, pro-democracy candidates scored an overwhelming victory in local elections, winning 85% of the seats up for grabs. Bloomberg's Rosalind Chin has the very latest from Hong Kong. There was an overwhelming support for the pro-democracy camp. I mean, if you look at some of the results being reported by local media, Stan News saying 388 seats out of 452 taken by pro-democracy candidates. So really a sweeping change there for the district councils in Hong Kong. Turnout also hit a record with twice as many votes cast as the last local race in Hong Kong. Plenty of M&A news this Monday. We begin with Charles Schwab agreeing to buy TD Ameritrade in a deal valued at around $26 billion. The tie-up creates a firm with $5 trillion in assets and may attract attention from antitrust regulators. LVMH has agreed to buy Tiffany for more than $16 billion. It is the largest luxury deal ever. It has shares of Tiffany higher by nearly 6% in the pre-market. Shares of New Jersey-based medicines company are higher by 22%. It's being bought by Novartis for $9.7 billion. HP is rejecting a Xerox request to open its financial books. That's after HP turned down its unsolicited merger offer last week. Carl Icahn is trying to seize control of Occidental Petroleum's board. Bloomberg News has learned the activist investor plans to nominate a slate of 10 directors. Shares of Uber are down 6% in early trading after London refused to grant the company a new license. Uber has 21 days to appeal and can continue to operate in London while a court considers the decision. And shares of Tesla are up almost 4% after Elon Musk said orders for the Cybertruck climbed to 200000 Just a $100 fully refundable deposit is required for an order. Futures this morning are moving higher. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures up 6.5 points. Dow futures up 66. NASDAQ futures up 26. The 10-year Treasury down 5.30 seconds yield 1.78%. And straight ahead, the latest world and national news. This is... Bloomberg. Thank you, Karen. It is 6.33 on Wall Street, and Michael Barr is here with more on what's going on around the world. Michael. Thank you very much, Nathan. Defense Secretary Mark Esper asked and received the resignation of Navy Secretary Richard Spencer over his handling of the case of a Navy SEAL accused of war crimes in Iraq that angered President Donald Trump. 
In a statement last evening, the Pentagon says that Spencer had gone behind Secretary Esper's back, proposing a deal to the White House that would allow Gallagher to retire with the Trident pen. Gallagher, while acquitted of killing a wounded ISIS captive earlier this year, was sentenced to four months of time served and a reduction in rank for posing with the corpse during a 2017 deployment to Iraq. He will get to retire as a Navy SEAL. The chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, says the inquiry into President Trump may go on longer than the impeachment process itself. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the story. Schiff says he doesn't know whether more witnesses will be called. I certainly think that the evidence that's been produced um, overwhelmingly shows serious misconduct by the president. But I do want to hear uh, more from my constituents, and I want to hear more from my colleagues. This is not a decision I will be making alone. Schiff on CNN says he'd like John Bolton to testify. In San Francisco, I'm at Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg announced he is running for the Democratic presidential nomination. Bloomberg, who is 77, called President Trump an existential threat to our country and our values as he joined a crowded field of candidates with fewer than three months before the Iowa caucuses. Michael Bloomberg is the founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP, the parent company of Bloomberg Radio. A Tonus County, Alabama sheriff was killed over the weekend by an 18-year-old who allegedly shot the officer. Apparently, Sheriff John Williams was shot for requesting the teen to turn down his loud music. President of the Alabama Sheriff's Association, Heath Taylor. Sheriff Williams answered a noise complaint at a convenience store. He confronted the individuals that had the loud music playing. They got into an altercation, and as a result of that altercation, Sheriff Williams was fatally shot and died there at the scene. The suspect, William Chase Johnson, was apprehended several hours after the incident when he returned to the crime scene. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was discharged from a Baltimore hospital and is said to be home and doing well after being hospitalized with chills and fever. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg, Nathan. All right, Michael, thank you. It's almost 6.36 now on Wall Street. Time for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stashow. Nathan, the Jets had put together a couple of victories, but they were against very bad teams, the Giants and Redskins. The test was yesterday. Oakland came in 6-4, and four, winners of three straight, looking to move into first place, and the Jets won 34-3. Not only their third straight win, their third straight game scoring exactly 34 points. Sam Darnold, who missed time early in the year with Mono, played terrific. 20 of 29, 315 yards. He threw for two touchdowns, ran for another. He outplayed Derek Carr, who got pulled in the third quarter after Brian Poole's pick six. The Jets' next two games, very winnable against the winless Bengals and the 2-9 and nine Dolphins. The Giants' woes continue. A 19-14 loss in Chicago, their seventh loss in a row. Another quiet game for Saquon Barkley. Has not had near the season he had as a rookie a year ago in his previous game against the Jets. Barkley had only one yard rushing, and this one he had only one yard receiving. Giants' QB is Daniel Jones. I mean, I think... You know, I got to do a better job finding him when he when he's open and, and getting the ball. You know, accurately. I think you know defense is certainly aware of, of what he could do in the past game, and, and uh, you know, or you know, account for that and, and the way they they play him. But yeah, I mean, I got to do a better job getting him getting the ball. Jones and the Giants, two and nine. Next Sunday they play Green Bay, and the Packers will not be in a good mood. They lost last night at San Francisco, thirty-seven to eight. The 49ers are ten and one. So are the Patriots. They beat Dallas. 13-9 at the Garden. The Nets held off the Knicks, 103-101. Brooklyn's third straight win. Spencer Dinwiddie, Dinwiddie led them with 30. Marcus Morris had 26 for the Knicks. St. John's beat UMass, 78-63. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stash. Nathan. Thank you, John. It's 637 on Wall Street. And coming up today, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell delivers remarks in Rhode Island. Let's get a preview from Bloomberg's Charlie Pellet. It'll happen at the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce Annual Dinner in Providence after Powell spends part of the day visiting a community development initiative with Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren in Hartford. In remarks to Congress earlier this month, Powell maintained his view that rates are in a good place following this year's third cut on October 30th, provided the outlook doesn't suffer a, quote, material reassessment. The next Fed decision comes December 11th. Charlie Pellet, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Charlie, thank you. It's 638 on Wall Street. The following commentary is from Bloomberg Opinion. I'm Justin Fox, a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. 
Parking on New York City streets is generally free and open to all, if you can find a space. Some local officials are starting to talk about requiring permits to park on residential streets, as is done in other cities. This made me wonder, how much would the city have to charge to keep from making things worse by encouraging even more New Yorkers to park on the street? My guess, obtained via a number of methods, including the value of the time New Yorkers spend sitting double parked in their cars waiting for street sweepers to go by, the cost of a spot in a parking garage, and how much the land taken up by parked cars is worth, is that the fair value of a street parking space in most of Manhattan is between $6,000 and $8,000 a year. Hey, it's less than a dollar an hour. I'm Justin Fox. For more opinion, please go to Bloomberg.com slash opinion or OPIN Go on the Bloomberg Terminal. This has been Bloomberg Opinion. You can hear Bloomberg Opinion commentaries every weekday at this time. Terminal customers can read more at OPIN Go. 639 on Wall Street, time for the Bloomberg Small Business Report. Here's John Tucker. Republicans in the Senate had crippled the Export-Import Bank of the U.S. by refusing to confirm nominees for its board and its chairman. It was an ideological stance. They claimed the bank, a federal agency which guarantees loans to boost exports, was practicing crony capitalism, favoring big companies over small businesses, and putting taxpayers at risk if the loans defaulted. The Senate has finally confirmed President Trump's choice to be chairman, Kimberly Reed, as well as new board members. But Bloomberg columnist Joe Nocera reports that the Axiom Bank is doing exactly the same thing in this administration as it did in previous administrations. In September, he points out, it approved a $5 billion loan to finance a liquefied natural gas project. And the main contractor for the project is not some small business, but a major oil company. And that's the Bloomberg Small Business Report. All right, thank you, John. S&P futures are higher by 6.5 points. Dow futures gaining 66, and NASDAQ futures are up 27 points. The 10-year is down 5.30 seconds, yield 1.78%. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SEI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. This is a Bloomberg Pursuits look at luxury. Are you looking for a holiday gift with serious bling? And we mean serious. Over 50 carats of diamonds went into an Octo L'Original watch from Bulgari. Every movement sets off a firework display, which, if you're going to drop a cool $928,000 on a watch, is exactly the point. In Brooklyn, it's been a good year for Cause, K-A-W-S, whose artworks have sold for millions of dollars at auction and caused stampedes at art fairs. It's been so good, the artist, whose real name is Brian Donnelly, closed on a 10,000-square-foot building for $17 million 
in the heart of trendy Williamsburg, next to his current studio. Finally, whatever may or may not come of LVMH is offered by Tiffany. The jeweler's chief executive says consumers don't care who owns the brand. Customers care about your product, about sustainability, about the beauty of your products. This is what really makes success, says Alessandro Bogolio at Bloomberg's second annual The Year Ahead Luxury Conference. I'm Andrew Rode, Bloomberg Radio. Imagine. Imagine being denied an apartment because of your religion or your race or because you have children or a disability. It's so wrong. Yes, but who has the power to stop this? You do. Each of us has the power. The law is on your side. It's illegal for landlords to discriminate because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. If you suspect that you have experienced housing discrimination, file a complaint with HUD immediately so we can investigate it. Fair housing is your right. Use it. To learn more, visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Or call 1-800-669-9777. 1-800-669-9777. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. IBKR is the professional's gateway to the world's market. The IBKR Pro Account Plan offers investors enhanced price execution, our lowest margin loan rates, and highest interest paid on idle cash balances, and access to our powerful trader workstation, web, mobile, and API trading platforms. In addition, the IBKR Pro Account Plan offers low-cost access to stocks, options, futures, forex, fixed income, and more on over 125 markets in 31 countries. Learn more or open an IBKR Pro Account at IBKR.com. Connecting decision makers to a network of news and financial information 24 hours a day. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. President Trump tweeting he's happy Pentagon Chief Mark Esper has fired Navy Secretary Richard Spencer. The break coming over Spencer's handling of the case of a controversial Navy SEAL. The president tweeting he'll nominate U.S. Ambassador to Norway, retired Rear Admiral Kenneth Braithwaite, to replace Spencer as Navy Secretary. An unprecedented landslide win in Hong Kong for pro-democracy candidates in weekend local elections. With night falling now, correspondent Will Ripley says things have been peaceful but tense. The pro-democracy movement knows that the Hong Kong system fundamentally remains unchanged and so they're vowing to continue their fight which is why we're seeing a protest like this one outside of Pali U where dozens of protesters are believed to be hiding out and protests that begin peacefully like this here in Hong Kong often have the potential to turn violent. The city of London canceling Uber's contract to operate there citing safety issues. Sunday night football San Francisco over Green Bay 37 to 8. Stock futures are gaining. I'm Michael Toscano. Why all the top-tier experts? Because business is not a magic trick. Give us a sense of the economic backdrop. Bloomberg Markets. Which financial records are these? Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Futures this morning are moving higher. And let's go to the first word breaking news desk for today's morning call. Here's Bill Maloney. Bill, good morning. And good morning, Karen. Like you said, U.S. futures trading in the green helped by China's decision to raise penalties on IP theft. Dow futures currently up 66 points. SB's gained six and a half. Well, NASDAQ futures climb by 26. The U.S. 10 year yield is at 1.79%. Gold is down four. And Hong Kong rose 1.5% overnight. Well, European markets are all are trading higher, led by gains in the U.K. Back in the U.S. on the economic front at 8.30, Chicago Fed, and at 10.30, the Dallas Fed. In deal news, it's been busy. LVMH to buy Tiffany for $16 billion. Novartis agreed to buy Medicines Company for $9.7 billion. And Schwab to buy TD Ameritrade in an all-stock deal valued at $26 billion. In other news, Elon Musk said the Cybertruck orders have climbed to 200000 Shares are up 3.8% in the pre-market, and Uber is down 6% in the pre-market after losing its London license. Wrapping things up, Prudential was cut to sell its Citigroup. Energizer raised to neutral at J.P. Morgan. NVIDIA raised to overweight at Morgan Stanley. And Decker's Outdoor raised to outperform over at Wells Fargo. Live from the first of breaking news desk, I'm Bill Maloney. Karen? 
All right, Bill, thank you. And to hear live breaking news over here at Bloomberg, type squawk on your terminal, S-Q-U-A-W-K. And again, this headline from GE and named Carolina Dieback happy as CFO, effective early 2020. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael. Karen, Navy Secretary Richard Spencer has been ousted by Secretary of Defense Mark Asper. It was over Spencer's handling of the case involving Navy SEAL Eddie Gallagher. Who thought he was acquitted, uh, who though he was acquitted of killing a wounded ISIS captive, was sentenced to four months of time served for posing with a corpse during a deployment in Iraq. President Trump publicly criticized the Navy for launching a review that could have stripped the decorated veteran of his status as a Navy SEAL. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg says he's joining the Democratic field running for president. Michael Bloomberg is the founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP the parent company of Bloomberg Radio. In the NFL, the Jets won against the Raiders 34-3. The Giants lost, the Patriots 49ers, and the Redskins won. The Ravens are at the Rams tonight. In the NBA, the Nets hang on to beat the Knicks 103-101. The Wizards lost. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg, Nathan. All right, Michael, thank you. We are live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker studios where it is nearly 650 on wall street time now to check what's going on in dc where the impeachment investigation against president trump is heading into a decision phase for democrats house intelligence chairman adam schiff tells nbc's meet the press his panel's probe could continue even after it submits its report to the judiciary committee there are still other witnesses other documents that we would like to obtain uh, but we're not willing to go the months and months and months of right. rope-a-dope in the courts, which administration would more than love for us to do. Schiff says they've already gathered overwhelming evidence that President Trump sought foreign interference in next year's election. Republican Senator John Kennedy was asked on Fox News Sunday whether he thinks Ukraine or Russia interfered in 2016. His answer, we don't know. The Republicans in the House wanted to call a witness, a DNC political operative, who lobbied the Ukrainian embassy to be involved, get involved in the 2016 election. We don't know if Ukraine did that. We don't know to what extent because uh, they won't let the president offer his evidence. Democrat Eric Swalwell was on the same program. It was Russia, and as a country, we have to make sure that we absolutely acknowledge it was Russia, condemn Russia for it, and it actually plays into Russia's hands if they have this equivalence with Ukraine where we're saying, well, maybe we don't know which one it was. An impeachment trial could interfere with the Democratic primary. Six of the candidates are senators who'd serve as jurors right in the middle of campaign season. One of them, Amy Klobuchar, tells ABC's this week she's ready. The American people see this right now. They're listening to it. I'm sure they're going to be talking about it at Thanksgiving. But they want a check on this president. They want an economic check. People are dealing with pharmaceutical prices that are out of control and college prices. But they also want a patriotism check. And Michael Bloomberg, founder and majority owner of Bloomberg Radio Parent Bloomberg LP, is making a late entry into the presidential race. White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway reacted on CBS's Face the Nation. It means that the Democratic field is underwhelming, even to someone like Michael Bloomberg. There are 18 Democrats still running for President of the United States, Margaret, with probably another 10 or 12 already dropped out of the race. And it's Michael Bloomberg coming in saying, I don't think any of you can beat Donald Trump. For all the talk about electability, that's a fiction. You don't know if somebody can or can't win until they do or don't. And that's just some of the conversation from the political shows heard every Sunday on Bloomberg Radio. NBC's Meet the Press at 11 a.m. Wall Street Time, Fox News Sunday at ABC's This Week at 1 p.m. and Face the Nation from CBS at 2. And Bloomberg Washington reporter Kathleen Hunter joins me now on all this. Good morning, Kate. Uh, let's start with the impeachment inquiry. It seems as though the public hearings are over in the House Intelligence Committee, but maybe uh, Chairman Schiff is leaving the door open for more. I think he's definitely leaving the door open, Nathan, and I think that, um, you know, I do think, though, that the focus now is shifting to the Judiciary Committee, and one of the questions is how long it's going to take for the uh, Intelligence Panel to get its recommendations together formally and submit a report to the Judiciary Committee. Um, this is kind of in the weeds, but I think that these, you know, differences matter now, and that's something that we're going to all be watching for very closely and really anticipating. Now, when the inquiry heads to the Judiciary Committee, what do you expect to happen there? Could we see even more public hearings? Could we see Republicans getting to call some of the witnesses that uh, Senator Kennedy in that in that soundbite alluded to? 
Well, absolutely. I think it was a strategic move on the part of Democrats to put the initial phase of these hearings in the Intelligence Committee, in part because um, constitutionally the Judiciary Committee is the one that really has oversight of impeachment. And so I think that the Republicans on the panel are going to get uh, more empowered now that they're um, now that the, the Republicans are going to be more empowered now that the inquiry is in the hands of the Judiciary Committee. And so I think that I would expect them to take you know full advantage of that potentially. Um, and so I think that's something also to watch is the dynamics as it moves into the Judiciary Committee. We could see additional public hearings and we could see Republicans utilizing the power they have in that panel. Now, much as the Democrats have said they don't want to commit to a timetable for uh, you know how long this inquiry could last before it possibly uh, heads over to the Senate for a trial, I mean, they are uh, under some time pressure, aren't they? They are. They've said that they want to wrap this all up completely by Christmas, which we have to also remember, even though Christmas is a month away, um, when we're talking in legislative terms, you know, you have to factor in weekends, you have to factor in shorter work weeks. And so it's really not a lot of time for them to get this together. And so um, I think what Adam Schiff has said is that he'd like to get the report or there's been some kind of a time frame on a report by the end of November, which is just a few days away, about five days away, obviously. And so um, I think we have to see whether or not that's going to happen. He didn't commit yesterday on the on the morning shows to a firm tie frame, but that gives you a sense of kind of where his head is at, for sure. Now, in the meantime, there are some questions surrounding the top Republican on the House Intelligence Panel, Devin Nunes, who's uh, facing some accusations now from one of the uh, associates of Rudy Giuliani, uh, who's facing charges. What do you know about that? Yeah, so um, this is a question of whether or not Nunes has actually been, um, you know, acting, uh, whether he's taken some actions that might be, you know, on behalf of either the president or on behalf of the efforts in Ukraine and whether or not that is really appropriate. And so he's facing these accusations now and it could prompt um, some sort of response from the House Ethics Committee. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, the way that he's responding is really kind of in indignation. It's I would sort of characterize it as a page from the Donald Trump playbook where we've seen him kind of lashing out at the media over the reports about this and really just, you know, um, kind of fomenting indignation about the whole, uh, the, whole, the whole accusation that's been out there. All right, let's turn to the latest in the 2020 Democratic race. Michael Bloomberg, the uh, founder and majority owner of Bloomberg Radio Parent Bloomberg LP, is now officially a candidate. He's made a huge ad buy and he's moving in with an untested strategy. He is. And so um, it looks as though he's going to be bypassing the first couple um, voting states, the Iowa caucuses, and then um, also um, uh, New Hampshire and South Carolina primaries. Now, traditionally, obviously, that's where candidates tend to um, define themselves from the pack. Often, even we've had a sense in past elections of who the nominee is, you know, by the time Super Tuesday comes along. But it seems like this is a different strategy going in, and we'll have to see how effective it is. Uh, and Bloomberg's campaign team has said he plans to self-finance. He's not going to seek donations. Doesn't that keep him out of debates? It does, because the DNC has pretty strict requirements for um, getting in the debates. Now, I think it's also important to remember, just in this last debate, which was the smallest debate we've seen so far, there were 10 candidates. So it's not like these folks uh, necessarily individually are getting a whole lot of airtime in these debates. Um, but certainly that's another thing that defines his strategy as different from other candidates that we've seen. Lots to watch. Bloomberg Washington reporter Kathleen Hunter, thank you as always for keeping us up to date. And you can read more uh, of what's happening in the nation's capital. Just go to Bloomberg.com or find all the latest stories on the Bloomberg Terminal. And you can follow all the latest on Bloomberg Radio in Washington as well. Just tune into Bloomberg 99.1 and 105.7 FM HD2. Karen. All right, Nathan, thank you. And we're going to bring you a little more on these headlines from GE. It's appointing Carolina dieback Hapa as chief financial officer as Larry Culp brings in a new partner to help tackle one of the trickiest turnaround efforts in corporate America. dieback Hapa, the current finance chief of AP Moeller Maersk, will replace Jamie Miller in early 2020. Futures this morning are moving higher with S&P futures up seven points. Dow futures up 72. NASDAQ futures up 27. Ten-year treasury down five. 30 seconds yield 1.78 percent and the yield on the two-year 1.64 percent nymex crude oil down two tenths percent or 13 cents at 57.64 a barrel and comex gold down half percent straight ahead bloomberg surveillance with tom keen jonathan farrow and lisa abramowitz for nathan hager i'm karen moscow and this is bloomberg In what if your email was organized by project and not by date what if everyone looked at the same thing instead of their own inbox 
then it wouldn't be email at all. Forget your fragmented jumbled inbox and make the change to channels in Slack. Spaces dedicated to individual projects, topics, or teams. All your communication is neatly organized and everyone is on the same page. Slack. Choose a better way to work. Get started at slack.com. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. At Lidl, we're big on those little reasons to be jolly. Like our delicious Favorina all butter mini stolen bites for just one ninety nine, And six deluxe mince pies for just one thirty five. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, select the stores excludes the night. World, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. is Bloomberg Surveillance Economics. American economic power and future depends on trade deals. In many of these countries, we're still seeing people struggling. Finance. We're in this vortex of uncertainty. These big companies, they just sometimes lack focus. Investment. The markets have become a little bit too addicted to the Fed. Timing the market is just so difficult. Bloomberg Surveillance with Tom Keen and Jonathan Farrow on Bloomberg Radio. From New York City for our audience worldwide, good morning. Good morning, good morning. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. Coming up on the program, China increasing IP theft penalties, addressing a sticking point in trade talks. German business confidence increasing, hopes remain elevated, macro concerns will fade, taking some pressure off Fed Chair Jay Powell, delivering a speech later this afternoon. From the Bloomberg Interactive Brokers Studio, hello Monday, here is your Monday morning price action. Equity futures grinding higher by a quarter of 1% on the S&P 500, up a little more than 7 points and coming off the back of the first week of losses in 7 weeks. Weeks alongside Tom Keane and Lisa Abramitz, I'm Jonathan Farrow. Tom Keane, a small grind higher ahead of this holiday short and trading week. It, it's a grind higher, but it's correlated. It's nicely correlated. And the one thing I'd note, John, is euro a little bit uh, off a step, maybe a one. Nine in the future, one ten fifteen right now in euro. And other than that, do we just say it's off a little bit of a? A little bit of a good news off China? Just a little, little, little bit of just, optimism a, a little around bit the trade story. Just a little Are there bit. enough transactions this morning? Is it M&A everybody? Monday? Are we calling it that? No, I don't like that. You hate that, don't you? Why? It's just, you know, it's like selling it. and it's it, But it's nice. It's just Schwab, Ameritrade to fruition. and um, 16.7 billion debt okay. included. In fairness, you're knocking the whole idea of Merger Monday, but you came into the studio before we went on air and you said, it's oh. Merger Monday. Oh, Merger Monday. <laughs> The big reveal. So, yeah. The big reveal. I it's think a Lisa very just outed you. No, I just of outed the, uh, the but, And then we got, Monday. you know, Uber. Right? It's not a merger, but, you know, is Uber a big deal, John, in London? Yeah, it's a bigger deal. It's becoming a much bigger deal. But yeah. the actual allegations are pretty bad. We'll get into that. Yeah, more, the more mayor. Than, more than 40,000 registered drivers on Uber yeah. in London. So, yeah, big presence. I, what came up on me this weekend, folks, besides the Todd's stunning uh, victory over oh, West Ham, was, was the Hong Kong elections. I, I really didn't see them coming. Wow. Those are wow statistics. A landslide victory in local district yeah. councils. Pro-democracy candidates winning 85% of the seats up for election, Lisa. Record turnout of 71%. And this particular vote wasn't necessarily such a big deal in and of itself because the people who are elected uh, don't make major moves in a sort of political way uh, that's sort of international. That said, the interest... The, the, the sort of passion among voters, very telling. We're going to be talking about that a little bit a little bit later. We've got to talk about M&A Monday. We aren't going to call it that because there are so many deals to get our teeth into. Can I just have a comment on LVMH and Tiffany? Some of this is going to be funded by debt, and it will yield yeah. zero to one percent. And the current credit rating of LVMH right now in Europe is single A. And I think that Tiffany's and the likes of LVMH are thinking about what something something the U.S. companies have thought about for the last few years. 
What is the value of running a single A balance sheet when yields are still so low? If you run a triple B balance sheet, you still remain investment grade, the ECB will still buy your debt, and you can go and buy some growth with a yield on your debt of, what, 50 basis points for investment grade debt in Europe right now? You're basically it's being like free told. Money. Yeah, I mean, you're basically it, being told. I, I'm sorry. It, you know, we end with money for nothing. You yeah. know, dire straits, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's just that simple. It'll be interesting. I should point out, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's three of the four corners at 57th Street and 5th Avenue. You would know better than me. Chris Morangi shopped at all four stores on the corners. He's with us now, Chris Morangi, Cabelli Funds <laughs> co-chief investment officer. We're not going to talk about your shopping habits, Chris. Don't worry. Except what do you make, stocks, baby. What do you make of the deal flow that we've seen this morning, Chris? Yeah, well, both of, you know the uh, the thing about these two deals are the cat was out of the bag a couple of weeks ago on, on both of them. So this is just a confirmation of what we had speculated upon earlier. Um, you know, M and A has been a little bit slow uh, late this year uh, as there's been some uncertainty, obviously globally, policy in the U.S. What's happening with China? Um, but you know, I think uh, I've said for a while if you want to get a deal done, now's the time to do it. I probably have a regulatory window, and and certainly money is almost free. Why a regulatory window now? Uh, to the extent that you've got to get approved by U.S. regulatory agencies, perhaps there's a, a bit of a fog of war as we head into the election. You get something done now. You don't know what you're going to be left with a year from now, what what kind of administration and its position toward mergers. A lot of macro risk over the last year or so. A lot of hope that that's diminishing now, starting to fade. Do you share that hope, Chris? Yeah, I think you know the market tends to look at things through two lenses. One is what's happening with the election, and the other is what's happening with China. And uh, as you stated earlier, I think you know, a little bit of good news, perhaps, on the China front. I, I do think the market is pricing in uh, a high and increasing probability that we get a phase one deal. I think it's it's really changed from let's reset the relationship with China to let's just stop things from getting worse. You know, let's talk about what happened with China. They said that they were going to be cracking down on intellectual property theft uh, a little bit more. Uh, I'm trying to understand how real this is because this was supposed to be the hard part of the deal. They're coming out with something there. There's no sign of enforcement there. And we're hearing that soybean purchases dropped the lowest in years uh, by China of, of U.S. Uh, pr- produce. So what do you make of the pro- the actual advancement that we've gotten here? Yeah, I think I think you're right to be skeptical. Uh, we're, I'm certainly skeptical of how this actually plays out. But uh, again, to the point of let's just stop this from getting worse. Let's stabilize the situation that we have and, and, and move on from, from these headlines. Where's the opportunity right now? I don't mean to be saying, you know, you guys are running an esteemed value portfolio. We all know the Gabelli Media Mechanics. Mario started out in auto parts and that kind of securities analysis. When you guys talk, where's the sector right now where you go, wow, this is the opportunity? Yeah, so, um, you know, one theme we've been talking about recently is the uh, disrupted disruptors. That is, companies that have been... That would be Pharaoh, but continue. The the companies that have been disrupted over the last, you know, decade by these late-stage venture companies now, often public, who, uh, you know, work with free money and give stuff away. Um, And and that's spurred a lot of traditional companies to innovate. I think a great example of that is Disney Plus, for example, which uh, I spent a lot of time with this weekend. Um, And so... You know, that, and you see this throughout media, um, and you see it in a lot of other industries and consumer products and others. So I think that's an opportunity in some of these beaten down companies uh, to make some money, especially as the market seems to be pivoting toward value from momentum. Did you see the statistic over the weekend that Apple and Microsoft together are now twice as large as the entire S and P five hundred energy sector, and are larger than the entire Russell two thousand index? Yeah, I didn't see that specifically, but there there are a lot of comparisons like that. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm I'm struggling to wrap my head around this. How much further can they go? And they've been kind of the big driver of the whole rally that we've seen over the past. Six years. Microsoft in particular has been, uh, we've talked about the, the FANG, but really Microsoft has been the, the juggernaut over the last 10 years. And, um, you know, all very well managed companies with lots of capital. Um, I think one of the questions certainly is what happens uh, in the regulatory framework. Um, you've got both bipartisan pushback against all those companies. Let's talk about this rotation to value. JP Morgan out in the last couple of days and said it's 20% complete. The market stood in the first phase of the rotation, largely technical, short covering, etc. 20% complete. What do you make of that? Yeah, listen, so you've got a few things. Uh, you've got the market anticipating a bottoming in GDP sometime next year. You've got the steepening of the curve. And frankly, the, the gap in valuation between the most expensive and the cheapest companies uh, as wide as it's been in 20 years. Uh, so, you know, that, we've seen a little bit of mean reversion. I think that's going to continue. 
Chris Morangi, great to catch up with you. Gabelli Funds Co. Chief Investment Officer. Ahead of Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving, Chris. Great to see you. Chris, thank you so much. Greatly Tom Keen, let's talk Mr. about Mr. these Gabelli markets, well. shall we? Let's talk about these markets. The bond market has started to fade in terms of the steepening we saw a few months ago. Yeah. We had some flattening yeah. over the last couple of weeks, some cracks in high yield as well. Just a little bit more concern, I would say, in the last week than the last couple of months. Yeah, you know, last week, last two weeks is where we are and where we're always focused, particularly on a Monday. I, I'm really into like the year end thing. And, you know, I look at S&P up 24 percent, rounded up the Dow up 20 percent. And in the bond market, we've just got to say there's a regime here of lower yields. And who, that's wants, been- who wants to guess the best performing equity market so far in 2019? You, per- you get a prize, the best performing, uh, best performing. Just have a guess. I'm guessing Italy. Italy? Lisa? Greece. Greece it is. Yes. Greece is top Very of the pile. What's the price? Greece is up 46% I'm in 2019. I don't know if you can call that a market. Tom went with Italy. The FTSE MIB is up 28% in 2019. Yeah. The DAX is up 25 yeah. All of those markets outperformed really, the S&P really 500 through this year. Absolutely unreal. I, I'm just trying to figure out how much has been brought forward. You know, everyone talks about a resurgence next year that people are going oh, to see if things aren't so bad. So we're not gloomy on Thanksgiving week. I'm always a little bit gloomy. <laughs> you just call me Eeyore. No, I mean, honestly, I, I just I have to wonder. There's a lot of optimism uh, right, right now about 2020. Oh, I thought you were going to say dessert. What are you going to have for dessert? I'm looking at pumpkin composition, cornbread and caramelized pineapple, or hot chocolate and pecan Who is cooking this? Composition. Did, composition. did Mrs. King just send you a menu? <laughs> there, was, there was just, there was an executive decision. I love the idea that Mrs. King sends out a menu for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yeah, well, there was an executive decision made, and they said, you're cooking. I said, no, I'm not. So we're going out to, you know, McDonald's. Composition is not Oh, that's the, the Thanksgiving McDonald's. 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 Oh, okay, that's the Thanksgiving menu at McDonald's this week. Yeah, pump, yeah what, right. what the hell is pumpkin composition? I've got no it's idea. It sounds like something you eat. From New York City, this is Bloomberg Surveillance Live on Bloomberg Radio ahead of this short and trading week. Let's get a check on the news. Michael Barr here. Michael. Thank you very much, Lisa. John Tom, the chief of the Pentagon, fired Navy Secretary Richard Spencer amid a dispute over the fate of a SEAL accused of war crimes in Iraq. President Trump has championed the SEAL's case, overruling the sailor's demotion and stating his opposition to kicking him out of the elite naval force. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg announced he is running for the Democratic presidential nomination. Bloomberg says he is running to rebuild America. Michael Bloomberg is the founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP, the parent company of Bloomberg Radio. The Supreme Court's oldest justice is home after a weekend hospital stay. The court says Ruth Bader Ginsburg fell ill Friday evening, experiencing chills and a fever. Ginsburg is said to be doing well. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts to more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg, Lisa. Thank you so much, Michael. We are seeing a little lift to markets ahead of the U.S. Open on the heels of some positivity, perhaps, uh, between the U.S. and China on trade. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's environment of market volatility, Pershing's Prime Services is well positioned to support the needs of hedge funds and other alternative investment managers. Whether it's customized financing or securities lending solutions, platform access, or business expansion, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and agile enough to meet your evolving demands. Pershing helps to solve the needs of clients by advocating for them, providing unwavering strength, deep supply, and award-winning service that is at the core of everything we do. Find out what sets Pershing's prime brokerage team apart. Learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers offered by BNY Mellon's Pershing. Visit our website at pershing.com. Pershing LLC, member FINRA, NYSE, SIPC. 
Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. When Harlequins take on Leicester Tigers, it's always a big game. But this year, it's the big game. Hosted at Twickenham, you can expect fireworks on the field and off it. Pre-kick-off, enjoy music, entertainment and a truly incredible atmosphere. Then watch two Gallagher Premiership rugby giants go head-to-head. Tickets from just £17 children, £27 adults. Go to tickets.quins.co.uk or search Big Game 12. Kick off 4.30pm, Saturday 28th of December, Twickenham Stadium. Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. Not on our watch. In real life, you can fill your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery is running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We can't in real life. Brent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, shop small. small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small, only by American Express. Stations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Tracy Alloway on Bloomberg Markets. Joining us now is Bank Julius Baer, MD and Head of Asia Research, Mark Matthews. One of the uh, overarching characteristics of markets currently across asset classes really is low volatility. Do you think markets are underestimating any big geopolitical or macro risks at the moment, or do they have it broadly right? I think the risk is uh, on the U.S. political side, where um, it's really still very much a toss-up who will be president next year, and, uh, and, and even who will be the uh, candidate on the Democrat side, we won't know until the beginning of March. So I, I think, if anything, uh, if we see uh, you know the, the Democrats gaining uh, steam, uh, uh, and it's it's really it could be anybody at this point, but uh, that to me would cause an increase in volatility because the the rift between the two sides in terms of their policies is is uh, as extreme as I can remember. And uh, if uh, somebody like Elizabeth Warren or uh, or Bernie Sanders or even Pete Buttigieg uh, got into power, I think you see a lot of people wondering about um, you know higher taxes and uh, nationalizing certain aspects of the healthcare sector and writing off student debt, that kind of thing. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow, 717 on Wall Street. And Bloomberg Daybreak is out on customer terminals, bringing you all the news you need to start your day. Let's get a check at the latest headlines with Hannah George at the Bloomberg Daybreak desk. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Karen. LVMH will buy Tiffany for more than $16 billion. It's the largest luxury acquisition ever. 
Uber was not granted a new license to operate in London. The company has 21 days to appeal and can continue operating in London while a court considers the decision. Pro-democracy candidates in Hong Kong scored an overwhelming majority in local elections. They won 85% of the seats up for grabs as voter turnout hit a record. And China is planning a record sale of dollar bonds. Sources say it's a potential $6 billion offering and would be double the size of last year's. For all the news you need to start your day, check out Daybreak on your mobile phone on the Bloomberg Anywhere app. Karen. And a thank you. S&P futures up seven points this morning. Dow futures up 70. NASDAQ futures up about 26. The DAX in Germany is up half percent. Ten-year treasury down 430 seconds. Yield 1.78 percent. Yield on the two-year 1.64 percent. NYMEX crude oil down two tenths percent or 13 cents at 57.65 a barrel. COMEX gold is down four tenths percent or six dollars ten cents at 14.64 40 an ounce. The euro 1.1012 against the dollar. British pound 1.2871. And the yen 108.87. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Tom, John, and Lisa. Karen, thanks so much. Exceptionally busy day. We'll try to give you all those stories through all of Bloomberg Surveillance. Lisa Bramow, it's John Farrell here as well. And Tom thanks, Taylor Tom. with us. Jeffrey Curry. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Curry joining us from Goldman Sachs. He's in our London offices this morning. Uh, Jeffrey Curry on oil, and it's real simple. There needs to be an observation on demand dynamics. What do you see right now? Well, when you look at um, overall demand for oil and energy broadly, it's what we would say benign. It's not great, not bad. And I think you have to dig into looking at the different components. There is a old economy CapEx component, and then there's a new economy OpEx component. OpEx means operating the economy. So things like jet fuel, gasoline, they're OpEx oriented. Well, the CapEx side would be heavy industry, which would be like diesel fuel. So we look at the heavy industry side, the CapEx side, it's relatively weak, but the new economy or OPEX side, it's relatively strong. On that, it's a relatively benign outlook for 2020. Jeff, let's talk about the old economy. This is something you've written recently. When we argued lower for longer commodity prices five years ago, it was based upon the need to rationalize old economy capacity. What happened? Well, the Chinese stimulated in 16 and 17. U.S. did fiscal policy in 17 and 18, and OPEC cut production over that time period. What did that do? Um, it just prolonged the rebalancing process. Um, we also added to capacity outside of China. We added to the debt levels, and as we got the emission dates data two weeks ago, we're at the highest level of emissions ever when many people thought the peak was 2014. So the net of it is we're in a worse place today than we were five years ago, but the positive point here is that we're beginning to see CapEx decline and the rebalancing beginning, which is why we're arguing to get long commodities today. Well, Jeff, just thinking about the old economy, though, just to take this another step further, how do some of these issues manifest themselves elsewhere? You mean in terms of... In uh, terms of the corporate losses that we might see, what it might mean for the debt market, what it means for emissions, all these kind of things. We can sit here and say the old economy is a small percentage of overall GDP, but does it have bigger implications elsewhere? Well, I, I think when you look at the returns in the old economy space, they've been um, so weak that you've seen more capital redirected at new economy. If you just look at a picture of new economy stocks versus old economy stocks, yeah. the wedge between the two is spectacular. In fact, I like to call it a lost decade of the old economy because all the capital is being fed into the new economy. Now, to answer your question specifically, the question is, can you see systemic risk developed out of the old economy? One stat I like to point out is... 90% of the non-financial debt globally is held by the old economy. Why? Because they have the physical assets that you could use as collateral to, get, to leverage to get the debt. So the question is, could this end up being a systemic risk? Our basic answer to that is no, because the deleveraging process right. has already begun. When you speak with David Costin, is there just a Goldman Sachs view of an industry roll-up, not only in oil, but in commodities in general? Well, in terms of, you know, he has a picture that's similar to the one I just described, which is when you look at the new economy, it's doing relatively well. And that wedge is, I think, at the outperformance is something like 52%. Um, I, I think the key point is that even when you look at the, um, you know, the, the price, you know, a, a, you know a EPS, 
um, um, number or a price to book or price to earnings, um, you know, you're at the high level, but you're not at crazy levels. And so that component will likely continue to grow next year, even though the old economy will likely continue to struggle. So yeah. David incorporates that. It's part of the view. But I think, again, goes back to that point that the new economy is two-thirds, the old economy is one-third. Jeff, just real quick here. Let's get some 2020 calls. We're looking right now at oil uh, traded on the NYMEX, $57.70. Where do you see it going next year? Um, you know, our base case is um, $60 a barrel for Brent next year, but I, I don't want to discount the ability for this thing to trade up into $65, $70 a barrel. Um, it just won't be sustainable. Um, and I think we saw that a couple of weeks ago when you had the risk on environment, um, equities rallied, commodities did not follow through. And one of the reasons why is these producers that are under financial distress sold forward on the forward curve, keeping prices under wraps. So the front end will try to spike up, but the back end will likely be sold. Mm-hmm as producers try to lock in those margins and that will keep it from going too high. Jeff Curry, thank you so much. He's with Goldman Sachs, of course, head of their commodity coverage. We thank him. We didn't have time there for gold where uh, he was most enthusiastic on it a number of uh, months ago as well. Futures up six, down futures up 68. And John, in the market, we get a relief off of that dash to lower yields. I mean, it's sort of a, well, I, you know, I don't know what the central banks are doing this week, but it's sort of a sigh of relief week. Ten-year yields up just a, a single basis point to 170. The two-year note coming up a single basis point two to one sixty-four. But to your point, Tom, last week I think we closed out Friday for another day yeah. of curve flattening. Yeah. Did we have eight straight days of it, Lisa? Yeah, but I believe yeah. it was the longest uh, curve flattening trend in at least two yeah. years, if not three. Well, well, eight, eight straight days is pretty important, and that's probably the number of times that Lisa's going to have to take the offspring. I know I will be there eight straight days to see. Frozen, frozen too. I mean, you know, it's, it's, are you it's, about it's, to Monica. play music it's, from okay. Frozen? I would never. Two. Yes, you only can play it if you no. sing along. Go ahead. Looking back nostalgically. Why? Go ahead. Why? Because Colin of the Twins had to see it six times this weekend. Once in IMAX. We apologize to all of our listeners. Can you apologize it was to a big, me? I, it's a big Frozen weekend. I'm sorry, Chuck. Yeah, it's what Disney Plus. Here? Disney. I'm taking the rest of the week off. It's yeah. Frozen weekend. I'm This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. Some big mergers to report today. Charles Schwab says it will acquire TD Ameritrade in a $26 billion deal. That's about $48.50 per share, a 19% premium based on Schwab's share price as of the close November 20th. Meanwhile, following a month of talks, Louis Vuitton owner LVMH is buying the iconic U.S. luxury jeweler Tiffany for $16 billion. This is the largest ever deal in the luxury sector. There's also a major deal in the drug industry today. The Swiss drug giant Novartis has agreed to buy New Jersey-based medicines company for $9.7 billion, snapping up a promising experimental cholesterol drug and adding to a string of recent acquisitions for Novartis. Stock futures point to a higher Wall Street open on renewed trade optimism. S&P futures up 7, NASDAQ futures up 26, Dow futures up 73. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. The lifeblood of tech startups isn't just money. It's executive and technical skills. The kind of skills that companies need to build real products. And the skills that venture capitalist Chris Sugden of Edison Partners sees in the graduates that are coming out of New Jersey Institute of Technology. The amazing thing about NGIT is their graduates, they have multiple offers on average, not just one. They're coming out with real skill sets that are immediately hireable and available to them. I think we see an understanding by the faculty and administration at NGIT that we've got to train and educate the whole student, not just their, you know, one side of their brain. And I do think that's sort of part of the DNA today. There's practical and there's sort of academia and merging those two together and understanding that if we're going to have our young people go get great jobs and have great successful careers, they've got to have both sides of their brain activated. And I think we see that with NGIT. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, shop small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small, only by American Express. 
I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. At Lidl, we're big on those little reasons to be jolly. Like our delicious Favorina All Butter Mini Stolen Bites for just one ninety nine, And six Deluxe Mince Pies for just one thirty five. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, select the stores, excludes an eye. If you're planning on driving this weekend, expect delays on the A406 North Circular Road. There'll be road closures between Tottenham and Edmonton from 10pm on Friday the 22nd of November to 5am on Monday the 25th of November, while we carry out essential maintenance and repairs. All roads in the surrounding area will be extremely busy, so please allow more time for your journey and expect delays in the area. Plan ahead and check alternative routes at tfl.gov.uk. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. Like all good tradespeople, Ford likes an early start too. That's why our Black Friday has already begun. Enjoy amazing savings across our hard-working range of new commercial vehicles. Save between £2,500 and £9,650 off the recommended retail price. Why wait until the 29th of November, when you can have that Black Friday feeling today? Plus, there's 0% APR representative on Ford Acquire. Search Ford Black Friday. Ford. Backbone of Britain. Exclusions apply. Combined promotions available till 30th of November 2019 at participating dealers. For Ford Acquire, finance subject to status and deposit restrictions apply. Free post Ford credit. This is the sound of festive fun in London. You want to keep your savings for the things you love this Christmas, not a new boiler. We're with you. So our boilers come with two years interest-free credit to keep your savings for a Merry Christmas. You'll get a five-year British gas warranty. And now we can quote by video call evenings or weekends. Get a quote by the 30th of November and get £150 off a new boiler or £450 off for existing home care customers. Search British Gas New Boiler. Conditions apply. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. From New York City, this is Bloomberg Surveillance for our audience worldwide. We're live on Bloomberg Radio. Two hours away from the opening bell. The news you need to know this hour. Global equities climbing after a move from China to tighten intellectual property rules. That's seen as a step forward in trade talks with Washington. Lots of corporate news on the front burner elsewhere. Charles Schwab has agreed to acquire TD Ameritrade in a deal valued at $26 billion. The tie-up would create a firm with $5 trillion in assets. And LVMH and Tiffany have struck a deal. The French company has agreed to buy Tiffany for more than $16 billion. And finally, shares of Uber under pressure after last London refused to grant the company a new license. The city cites safety concerns for the lost license. Uber has 21 days to appeal and can continue operating in London while a court considers the decision. There's some of the stories we'll be talking about through the next couple of hours then on Bloomberg Radio. And now time for some of the headlines from elsewhere. Let's say good morning to Michael Park. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, John. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Tom. Pentagon Chief Mark Asper has fired Navy Secretary Richard Spencer over Spencer's handling of the case of a SEAL accused of war crimes who President Donald Trump has defended. Trump tweeted his satisfaction with yesterday's firing. Spencer went behind his back to work with the White House over the fate of a Navy SEAL accused of war crimes. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has said Esper made the right call. I believe he did the right thing. He should be proud, good order, morale, and discipline in the armed services have to transcend politics. The president says he'll nominate the U.S. ambassador to Norway to replace Spencer as Navy secretary. Hong Kong's pro-democracy opposition has won a landslide victory in local elections 
in a clear rebuke to city leader Carrie Lam over her handling of violent protests that have divided the semi-autonomous Chinese territory. The Supreme Court says Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is home and doing well after spending a weekend in the hospital. Ginsburg was treated for a possible infection. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts from more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Jonathan? Michael Barr, thank you, sir. It's time now for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Report. Here is John Stashauer. John, what's gotten into the Jets? They lost to lowly Miami. They were 1-7, and seven, but now after their first three-game winning streak since 2015, Jets are only two games out of a playoff spot. The Raiders came to MetLife looking for a win that would get them into a tie for first. They went home 34-3 to three losers. The Jets pulled away with three touchdowns in the third quarter. And the next two games are against the Bengals, who are winless, and the rematch with the Dolphins, two teams with a combined record of 2-20. and 20. Bengals, the only team in the NFL with a worse record and a longer losing streak than the Giants, who in Chicago scored first and last, but in between those two giant touchdowns, the Bears outscored them 19 to nothing. The Giants didn't get a single first down in the third quarter. Daniel Jones had his usual costly fumble. Aldrich Rosas missed two makeable field goals, and the Giants have lost seven in a row. The Nets, still without Kyrie Irving, have their first three-game winning streak. They beat the Knicks at the Garden 103-101. Spencer Dinwiddie scored 30 for Brooklyn. Marcus Morris had 26. He made seven of eight threes for the Knicks. The Nets are in Cleveland tonight. College Hoops, St. John's trailed at the half, but beat UMass. 7863. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stashower. John? John Stashower, thank you, sir. John with the sports. You've had the news. Let's get you some price action this Monday morning. Equity futures advance a little more than six points, positive two tenths of one percent on the SP 500, following the first week of losses on the benchmark here in the United States in seven weeks. That's where in the bond market we shape up as follows. The curve flatter through the last eight days coming into today yields up today by a single basis point to 1.786% on a US 10 year. This is Bloomberg. From our world headquarters in New York, good morning, everyone. Bloomberg Surveillance, right to it with Futures Up 6. The Bloomberg NJIT STEM report brought to you by New Jersey Institute of Technology, transforming computing professionals into data scientists to meet demand in this fast-growing field. More at njit.edu slash Jersey City. Here's Nathan Hager. Tom, Jonathan, Lisa, good morning. Here's what's making news in science, technology, engineering, and math. Amazon is turning to a smartphone app known for cheap deals to get more Chinese shoppers clicking on Black Friday. The e-commerce giants just opened a storefront on Pinduoduo. That's China's third largest online retailer behind Alibaba and JD.com. For three days starting on Thanksgiving, Amazon will offer Chinese shoppers a range of overseas products from Australian baby formula to Nintendo Switches. And the two companies say their partnership will continue till the end of next month. Russia's largest data center has only been open about a year, but it has already landed clients from the U.S., Japan, and China. Most of them are Bitcoin miners. The facility is called Bit River. It's near a hydroelectric plant that generates some of the cheapest power in the world. Now, crypto mining isn't recognized under Russian law, but BitRiver says it's not doing the actual mining. It's just providing the equipment, and there is a lot of it. More than 20,000 mining devices at this facility with the capacity to more than triple that. And artificial intelligence can find the fastest route to your office and can turn the lights on at the sound of your voice. But can it be taught to be fair? A study out of the University of Massachusetts Amherst aims to try. It uses what the researchers call Seldonian algorithms to identify and control undesirable behaviors when machine learning researchers come up with their core algorithms. The uh, study in the journal Science says this isn't just about ensuring robots act ethically, but about controlling any kind of AI behavior. And that is today's Bloomberg NJIT STEM report. Tom, John, and Lisa. Nathan, thanks so much. Five things you need to know to start your day. Brought to you by a portfolio analyst. Powered by interactive brokers, savvy investors use portfolio analysts to create a consolidated view of their finances and check the health of their complete financial portfolio. Sign up for free. Do that at portfolio 
Analyst.com. John, the elections were extraordinary. 13% for the powers that be. 1-3, 13%. Landslide victory in local councils, local district councils for the pro-democracy right. candidates. That's the good news for the pro-democracy protesters. The real unknown is whether getting the bottom rung of the political ladder gives them enough weight now yeah. to push the Total powers that mystery. be to follow through on an independent inquiry of police abuses and perhaps yeah. go even further, the ability yeah. to nominate and elect the uh, the city's leader. And to keep things going, are we talking up today because of trade? Are we talking up today because of China news? I think to some degree, and Lisa, you weigh in because I know you share this view too, clamping down on IP theft abuses. Yeah. Look, I don't know how much you should and how much the administration will trust the judicial system in China, but this is like an olive branch, I think, for the U.S. side of the negotiations. The fact that China seems to be addressing publicly the hairiest issues here and trying to give President Trump a win on an issue that has been a concern of companies and executives for years is something that is an olive branch. The problem with it is the enforcement that was sort of the sticking point for soybeans is not going to be easier when it comes to trying to make sure that IP theft is a... Is, is avoided. Some progress, nevertheless, and some signs of some real yeah. progress, Tom, and I think that's encouraging. Smartest market comment earlier this morning, always interesting, Jeffrey Yu of UBS, he says, look, we're up to our eyeballs in cash, and with negative rates and that tendency, it's got to go somewhere, and it's going to markets. And looking ahead would, to next year, look, words. many people coming out and seeing another good year for stocks, but with one big caveat. I've heard it now from Solgen, I've heard it again from Credit Suisse. Going into next year, they're looking for a story of the first half being really good, and the second half, just yeah. things starting to fade because we, we don't get this you know, pickup. I'm, I'm struggling, though, with this idea that there's so much cash. I, I'm struggling with that, honestly. Which element do you struggle with? Well, is there? I feel like if you look at some of the fund manager surveys, people have been pretty fully invested. And, they've been, and, and, and honestly, what is cash, right? Are they going into short-term debt instruments? Well, it's been yielding something, at least in the U.S., for until the Fed started Lisa, cutting rates. If the appetizer's butternut squash Here we ginger go. Oh, soup dear Lord. with Here we go. smoked duck... For no safe, cash. Are you going to be distracted the whole week, whole week. over Thanksgiving? The From the pumped. menu that you're going to get at the restaurant that you at go McDonald's, to. Yeah. Yes, at McDonald's. At McDonald's, yes, yes sure. At the, yeah. they, they've got a lot of that. pumpkin composition at I can McDonald's. see the keys at McDonald's. Okay, we got a problem, Lisa. So we got to go to this. There's, there's baby uh, Charlie in the United Kingdom who we check in on every morning. And then there's Charles from Western Indiana. What is the thing about Charles right now? Is this like getting out in front of King Charles? John? Who's Charles from Western Indiana? Charles from Western Indiana is another issue within the Bloomberg surveillance oh, family. Oh, of course. So there's two Charlies. There's two Charles. Is this no, getting that out Charles front lives of in New Charles? York. That Charles lives in New York. Yeah, but he's you not West Indiana there. in him. You know? I think that we should hit on Uber because I think this is actually a really important story. I really Why do. are the babies think, now named Charles? I'm, I'm sorry. No. Just listen, okay. Uber, I think this is a big deal. So the, the, the London regulators coming out and saying... Are you uh, our babysitter? Is that why you're with us? Your babysitter. Are you babysitting guys? I'm talking about the news. Uber losing its license in London. This is Maybe a key issue for Uber. For and honestly, Can you imagine babysitting Tom King. To me, I think it's really interesting what the accusation was. The idea that some drivers were able to basically, once they were not licensed, get their yeah. photos up <clears throat> and, and pose as drivers. Cool. Yeah. That's well, concerning well, well, to me. I, I can tell you guys are so interested. If you just, really want to talk about Uber. You want to talk about Baby Charlie? No, I want to. No, I want to talk about the really tots. I mean, if I get in an Uber at the hotel, you know, the Motel 6 I am, I'm out there in shortage. And if I it's a great go game. Up, Did you watch it? Yeah, yeah well, I watched some of it. I couldn't watch. I was very busy. Fantastic but, game. Very entertaining. But, but, you know, they're back. What does a coach do when he goes in like that? Is he verbal or... Do they just all get pumped up? They get pumped up. They want to impress the new coach, and I think Jose Mourinho wanted them to attack more, and they did. Uber shares are down 4.7%. You're going to keep pushing this story, aren't you? They're down 4%. Oh, we appreciate almost that. Almost 5%. Lisa Brown is babysitting Tom Keane and Jonathan Farrell on Bloomberg Surveillance. This is... The Union Job. Bloomberg Radio. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. 
Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Why is delivering the best client experience a top priority at BNY Mellon's Pershing? Michelle Feinstein, Director of Client Engagement, explains. Today's investors want a financial relationship that's on demand, customized, and leverages the latest digital technology. At BNY Mellon's Pershing, helping advisory firms and broker dealers create great experiences for their clients is our priority. Through our integrated wealth experience, we give you a high-touch service, flexible technology choices, and expert insights so you can deliver a highly personalized experience to your clients at every step from onboarding to wealth planning to performance analysis and more and because we're part of bny mellon you'll benefit from more than 230 years of strength and stability at pershing we're personally invested in your success visit pershing.com to learn more about pershing's integrated wealth experience pershing llc and pershing advisor solutions llc are both members of finra and sipic Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. Not on our watch. In real life, you can feel your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols, and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery is running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We can't in real life. Rent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. Welcome inside Rachel's mind. She's unsure if now's the time to sell her home. Should we stay put or sell up? Wait. It's definitely best to wait. No, sell. Definitely sell. <gasps> Relax, Rachel. Purple Bricks has sold more homes than any other estate agent for two years running. Ah. Purple Bricks. You'll be totally sold. Independent sales data from 20 CI May 17, April 19. Fixed fee payable on instruction or after 10 months viewing services cost extra. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap. Keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, shop small. small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small. Only by American Express. At Lidl, we're big on those little reasons to be jolly. Like our delicious Favorina all butter mini stolen bites for just one ninety nine, And six deluxe mince pies for just one thirty five. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes an eye. Four hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in over 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. There will be a new Navy secretary with President Trump saying he'll nominate U.S. Ambassador to Norway, retired Admiral Kenneth Braithwaite, now that Secretary Richard Spencer is out. Barbara Starr reports Spencer annoyed his superiors with his handling of the controversial war crimes case of Navy SEAL Edward Gallagher. Defense Secretary Esper lost trust and confidence in him for not disclosing White House conversations. Secretary Spencer had appeared to be seeking a way to resolve a standoff between the Pentagon and White House over Gallagher's case. Hong Kong police are trying to coax protesters still stuck inside a Hong Kong university to come on out. This after pro-democracy politicians who won a landslide win in district council elections called for an end to the police siege there. Taylor Swift beat Michael Jackson's record at the American Music Awards, taking multiple honors last night at the AMAs, now surpassing Jackson's wins 29-24. I'm Michael Toscano. 
They like new developments. This is an industry that is in demand. They love telling you about all of them. What will society ultimately decide? Carol Mazur and Jason Kelly. Bloomberg Business Week. Weekday afternoons at 2 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Charles Schwab saying it'll acquire TD Ameritrade in a multi-billion dollar deal that will reshape the retail brokerage business. Schwab agreeing to acquire TD Ameritrade in an all-stock transaction that the company say is valued at $26 billion or about $48.50 a share. Uber Technology is losing its license in London for the second time in less than three years, putting one of its biggest markets outside of the U.S. at risk after the transport regulator said it failed to address safety concerns and Uber shares are down more than 4% in early trading. General Electric hiring Carolina Dybeck Hapa as its next chief financial officer, giving top boss Larry Culp a new partner to help tackle one of the trickiest turnaround efforts in corporate America. And U.S. stock index futures are rising this morning with stocks globally as investors digest China's decision to tighten intellectual property rules. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are up about 7 points. Dow futures up 66. NASDAQ futures up 25. The DAX in Germany is up four tenths percent. Ten-year Treasury down four thirty seconds, yield one point seven eight percent. The yield on the two-year one point six four percent. NYMEX crude oil down two tenths percent or twelve cents at fifty seven sixty five a barrel. COMEX gold down four tenths percent or six dollars forty cents at fourteen sixty four ten an ounce. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Tom, John, and Lisa. Hey, Karen, thanks so much. You need a briefing to get you started on a Monday. You do that across asset. You look at the litmus paper of the system, which is FX, which John Farrell can only mean Mr. You from London. I'm really you happy to say it? that Jeff Yu joins us now, UBS Private Banking Chief Investment Officer. Jeff, it's great to catch up with you. Let's walk through some things, Morning. shall we? You were underweight global equities. Something changed mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks. What changed? Well, less negative. I think, you know, that's probably the best way um, to put it. You know, data showing some signs of stabilization, acknowledging, you know, this phase one deal, you know, should it happen, you know, might just give markets a bit of a tailwind um, as well. So um, starting to take off some underweight, notably in emerging markets. But let's be clear, does this mean we're positive? No, it doesn't. You know, there is still daylight between being not negative versus positive, And I think markets need to tell the difference. All right. So let's talk about what's going on with trade, because IP, uh, the idea that China might crack down on intellectual property theft has given a little bit of lift to markets. Is this a meaningful development from your perspective? Right. So um, let's unwind, um, you know, back to uh, rewind, you know, back to you know May, you know, when the last deal supposedly collapsed. You know, this was one of the uh, crucial points, right? So it's not about what is being done; it's how it was being done. China objected to um, seemingly being forced by the U.S. to actually make changes in its law rather than you know administrative, you know, methods and which um, they you know, wanted to uh, push forward. So we want to see you know what the implementation is. I think um, the headlines um, don't give enough meat to um, that yet. Uh, so I think the two are trying to meet halfway at this point. I think what China needs to sell to the domestic population is that protecting IP, this helps China's innovation. It helps, you know, Chinese inventors. It helps holders of Chinese, Chinese holders of patents as well. I think, you know, that can be good for China's development and also, you know, make a deal more palpable. But again, proof is in the pudding. All right. So let's turn our focus now to Europe because we did say a a little bit better than expected data out of Germany that seems to be edifying this idea of a bottoming out uh, in the decline that we saw the deterioration in the European economy. What do you make so far? Do you think that this is a tipping point and that we're going to see a steady improvement uh, in the figures coming out of the Eurozone? So there are two things here. One is the relative and one is um, the uh, absolute, right? So if data is um, starting to uh, stabilize uh, on an absolute basis, uh, you know, then that's um, you know, fair enough. But uh, where is data performing you know, relative to um, expectations? And again, you know, this is more of a relative thing. So if we look at UBS's and surprise indices, for example, yes, data has stabilized, but also that's because you know, expectations have been so weak, it actually becomes easier to surprise to the upside or harder to surprise the downside, right? Uh, So I think you're putting these um, things together. We maybe we've bottomed out on an absolute and relative basis, but again, we need a demand catalyst to actually go up. Jeff, you've always been flow-based. The flow is cash Mm -hmm. up to our eyeballs. Define where the Mm -hmm. cash finds a warm spot or does it not have to? 
Mm. So I think cash will still, you know, have to go into yield territory at this point. There's some areas we like, for for, for example, emerging markets, yeah. oh, hard amazing. currency, sovereign debt, yeah. um, but also, you know, private equity alternatives. Think longer yeah. term. So you pick up the illiquidity premium. Uh, you know, that is a good substitute right now, but also a lot of right. white powder there as well. That's great. I'm so glad you mentioned that. That was going to be the name of John's property, the real yield. It was going to be called yield territory, but then the changed yield territory. It. Yield territory. Yeah. Jeff, can we get to the other part of the market that we haven't really discussed as far? What the basic assumptions are for foreign exchange at the moment? Many people thinking about buying the rest of the world. We've certainly had some outperformance from Europe through the year so far. What is the assumption that you have, the core assumption on foreign exchange and the U.S. dollar? Uh, when- we're not there yet, as in the dollar's probably topped out, but does it mean the start of a dollar bear trend? You know, not yet. So we there are selective EM names we want to you know pick up some carry from, um, but again, we don't want to really you know, fund that out of the dollar right now, but the dollar's not a real a, a, a low yielder anymore, right? It's not really a funding currency. Uh, so you fund that out of Aussie, you know, for example, where the, some of the cyclical trends are the same. You want to own some Swiss and yen, perhaps, um, if you're still uncertain about the outlook. Um, so I think the dollar's going to be choppy. I wouldn't add to dollar position right now, but again, not really a bad trend did, coming through. Did he say you want to own some Swiss? You want to go long Swiss franc? Mm-hmm. You want, as a defensive and play, we want to own the barbell, you know, so to speak. I'm yeah. going to tear up her. That's where I met John Farrow. Oh, God. Was, was Swiss uh, dynamics. I wanted to ask about um, so. <laughs> said Zurich a long, long time ago, Tom. <laughs> He's pulling out his napkin and dabbing at his eyes. It's very moving. But Jeff, I would love your perspective. You know, in 2019, the sort of overarching theme was a disinflationary kind of bent. You saw yields all around the world plunge. We seem to be shifting out of that. Heading into 2020, what is the driving narrative uh, that's giving you some focus? Well, so real yields, you know, where they go. Um, so, again, though disinflation, if we are going to start to price that out, uh, then does it mean we're going to start to price in inflation? I don't think central banks are ready to go for that yet. Remember, if monetary policy works, then yield curves are supposed to steep and inflation expectations are expected to go up. If we look at a five-year, five-year forwards right now, that's not coming through. But if we can keep real yield expectations relatively low, it's a good environment for real assets, for commodities, and for, for precious metals in the even then that could help explain some of the flow going into private equity to capture some of those real assets as well. So where do real yields go? And it's less about nominal yields now. It's more about inflation expectations. Can central banks succeed in reflating that? The jury's still out there. Can they, Jeff? Well, so, you know, right now you look at long-term demographics. Um, I still think, you know, they, they do sort of, you know, have their backs against the wall right now. Japanification, it's no longer a question of if, um, for example, in Europe, and you know, more and more people um, are, you know, saying, well, Europe is actually already in the throngs of that. So, you know, can, how can they actually make the best out of a bad situation? Um, so net, net um, you know, fiscal, is that going to come as well? Because, you know, that seems to be the last card to play. Curve flatter over the last eight days coming into today's session, mm-hmm. Jeff. What do yep. you make of that? So um, I don't buy the view that um, it's um, recession, you know, coming through. Um, I think some of it's in a profit, uh, profit taking on more of the uh, more reflationary trades um, that have, um, you know, come out. Data stabilization, but again, not data yeah. pickup. You need a data pickup demand to get a proper steeper curve. Jeff, you, you you mentioned five year, five years haven't moved, indicating mm-hmm. higher inflation. I actually looked at those charts Friday. It's amazing how we have stayed in a disinflation tone. Mm-hmm. If we move out the X axis of low inflation. How far out is Jeff U moving? Is it 2021? Or can you get out two and three and four years of sustained low inflation? Well, let's look at where um, your Japan's um, inflation expectations you know, have been, right? So let alone the numbers, the Tankan surveys, you, know, you barely see a five-year inflation expectation survey result above two on the part of corporates, which means no pricing power. So that really, I think, the, the onus is on the U.S. in particular and emerging markets to avoid you know, going into that um, kind of a spiral. Uh, so uh, I think five years, the absolute, uh, the absolute max, if you want to use um, the Tankan, the Japanese as a reference. But again, we go back to the demand kick. Is it going to come from fiscal? Fiscal. If it is, you know, then these things can actually miss even quite aggressively. So uh, remember, um, it's always, you know, the, the least position trades, the reflation trades, they come to you when you least expect it, right? Yeah. If we look at, you know, June 2016, right, from 190 to 270 in the space of two months. So, Jeff, this sounds vaguely not terrible, but not particularly a uh, raging bull here, yet we're hearing that there's so yeah. much cash hanging out there to go invest in stocks yeah. and such that it's going to lead to a good year for risk assets. Do you buy that? 
Um, so I have a lot of sympathy with that. You know, if we look at cash ratios in, on part of my uh, our private clients, on part of institutional clients, the dry powder and private equity, um, it, it seems like there is no alternative, right, but to be in equities. Um, but I think central banks will be thinking, what are the long term, especially political costs, um, right, if it does mean those with assets and those without assets, that just widens um, gaps and it causes difficulties for them. So I think that will be an ongoing force, but maybe something they'll gently try to deter. Jeff, you thank you so much with UBS. Thanks, Jeff. Don't, I'm sure we're going to talk to him before. I hope you know, so. I think I'm year. going to see him in London. So looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. I mean, we could see him in London, and you know, there's a lot going on. But there's an optimistic tone there. There's other people with the same. Well, it's more optimistic relative tone. to where they were. Uh, I think UBS. Yeah. I think it would be fair to characterize them as neutral relative to yeah. a negative stance a couple of months back. But I can't believe that just people look at the comps and they say, well, it's better than it was last year, and that's good enough. Al from New Jersey emails in. He loved it. He says how we link into 127 million dollars up front. Al from New Jersey was watching Frozen 2. I don't think that Al from New Jersey is interested in Frozen 2. I think he is. It has to do with Disney. He's trying to get the stock up. He's humming. He's humming Let It Go all morning. There we Why are we We're doing this? this Why are we doing John? It's un American. You're in trouble at you home. You are un American. to make it up to your youngest. Have you been bad at home? No, we watched this three times this Did weekend. You? I refused to go to the theater. Okay, I think was this, this, this is the weekend. makeup, isn't it? This is you trying to make up. Yeah. This is a Bloomberg mark. Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. Not on our watch. In real life, you can fill your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols, and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery is running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We can't in real life. Brent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, shop small. small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small. Only by American Express. Financial capital of the world. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Surveillance Economics. The Federal Reserve's independence is crucial. Central banks should be prepared and not presumptuous. Finance. In order to grow, you need to innovate. Global money doesn't like uncertainty. Investment. I think the issue in the market is really more about the possibility of a recession in the next couple of years. I do think we need to get back to where we have always been, the American dream. Bloomberg Surveillance with Tom Keene and Jonathan Farrow on Bloomberg Radio. Good morning, everyone. John Farrow and Tom Keene. Thank you for being with us. Lisa Abramo is with us on a Monday. Are you here all week? Yeah. Are you? I'm I mean, even on week. Thursday, you're going to be eating your pumpkin composition, and I'm going to be here just sitting here. You're coming I, I, in on Thursday? What? You come again no, on no, Thursday? No, no. Are you off, John, or do you? I'm you know, off from today. Do they, do they celebrate Thanksgiving? I in, do. In the United Kingdom? I celebrate it a lot. I'm taking the next few days off. <laughs> Are you really? Yes. I did not know that. Oh, dear Lord. How, what does he know that we don't know? You know it's he's, important. He's to gifted. He knows. It's really important to take time off. Oh, yeah. it is. Yeah, I got you up to 18 days. I counted. Oh, I had did a lot you? of time off this year. Yeah, well, a little bit more know, than me. Is that or 
Not that I'd be familiar with it, but divorce. Uh, futures up seven, <laughs> Dow futures up 67. This morning, it's a risk on feel as I go down uh, in flames. And really interesting market. Seriously, folks, amazing markets this morning with some transactions we can touch into and also good conversation here on economics, finance, and investment. Bloomberg Surveillance this morning brought to you by Cone Resnick. Transform your tax game. The Cone Resnick team can help dealmakers develop a winning tax strategy Visit com slash tax insight. So it will be most interesting. John, why don't you bring in our esteemed guests this morning? Pleased to say that Dean Kerner joins us now, Macro Fall. Risk Advisors CEO. Dean, great to have you with us on the program. So much to talk about. Let's just begin with a simple one. The primary message for clients right now, what is it? Right. I think you got to take what the market gives you. And right now, the market, in terms of, you know, we focus on options and the market. From an option standpoint, there's uh, there's two sides to any coin, and in this case, um, realized volatility is incredibly low. The markets are in this sort of mood of stability. Uh, you got to go all the way back to the bad old low vol days of 2017 to see a one month reading of realized vol in the S and P that's lower than it is right now. But what that does is it sets up, I think, for some pretty compelling opportunities to use option prices both to hedge and to speculate. Uh, so you can, yeah. you, know, you can always take what you have in the markets in terms of long exposure and convert it back to options. There's a little embedded insurance by doing that. And so our recommendation as the year ends with likely low levels of implied volatility is to take a hard look at your portfolio and look at where you can use options to replace some of your long equity positions. Dean, looking back over 12 months with, with an interesting 2019, did a lot of people lose a lot of money uh, taking in premium, just hoping for some kind of volume, uh, vol pop? I mean, was it give, did, they, did they give up a lot of return by hoping for a big volatility pop? Uh, not really. Uh, in fact, uh, so it's a great question. If you go all the way back um, over the course of you know many years in markets and study the behavior of realized versus implied volatility, you'll see that over time it actually pays you to sell options. Um, yeah. there's, an, there's an embedded risk premium, they call it the volatility risk premium, that you can earn over time. doesn't mean you can't lose money, and you certainly have during volatile periods. Um, and that, that trade has generally worked uh, with, again, with some hiccups along the way. But the last two years, selling options has actually really not produced um, a favorable risk uh, re- return outcome. It doesn't mean that buying options has been easy uh, on the opposite side. So it's really been a mixed bag of timing. You know, options have proven to be um, either favorable or unfavorable to, to, to own. There are times like now uh, that owning them has been challenging because of this concept called time decay, where the market doesn't move enough and uh, options decay in value. Uh, over time. So it's really been a mixed bag on that so, front, Tom. So, Dean, it seems like uh, the, the calm is a given heading into year end, and people seem to be getting up their risk appetite. But I'm wondering if we're going to see a repeat of what the disruptions that we saw in the repo market and what that might do, especially because we're hearing about big banks cutting back on their risk in order to meet their uh, their thresholds for their capital withholding requirements. So what do you make of that? Yeah, I think it's certainly, uh, as we talk to clients, it's on folks' minds. Uh, we, we have heard uh, f- from some clients that they are trying to distance themselves a little bit from some of the uh, requirements that they have uh, that uh, are a function of the repo markets behaving quite well. I- I'd say that, and I'm, I'm certainly not as close to this as others, but uh, the Fed knows this, right? The Fed is... Uh, saw the disruption. Maybe they didn't act as quickly as they should have, but I believe they're determined to act preemptively and just to make sure that that disruption, especially around year end and especially given what happened late last year uh, in terms of risk off, doesn't, uh, doesn't repeat itself. So I think sentiment right now is one in which the market's a, a, a bit tired. It's waiting for some new data, um, but there hasn't been a lot to catalyze uh, the risk off. I'd say folks are starting to look towards the early part of next year, and, and I think linking it to some of the Democratic primaries, um, you know, things like Super Tuesday, we're hearing folks set up hedges and seeing people set up hedges around March expiration because that encompasses, um, you know, the, the view that the, we'll, we'll learn more about where the Democratic Party wants to take it. Is it going to be moderate left or is it going to be far left? And setting up hedges 
uh, into late March. Interesting, Dean, because we're hearing from a lot of houses at the moment, including Socgen and Credit Suisse, looking for a bullish outcome in the equity market in the first part of 2020 and then looking for it to fade as the year grows older. Are we starting to see more people buy downside protection through the year as it progresses, Dean? Well, there, there was a story uh, that made, made it onto the Bloomberg. I think it was a Wall Street Journal story that purported that uh, Bridgewater had amassed a um, really sizable position in uh, global equity index protection. So think S&P, Euro stocks, maybe Nikkei. They're betting that the markets will go down. Yeah, and uh, again, at least as reported, and I always well, find it difficult. Well, hold on a second. I, I do feel like we have to just well, interject here. Well, Dean specified as reported as by reported, the Wall Street Journal. That Ray Dalio, said, has Ray Dalio to came out it. on LinkedIn and said the, they do not have a net bet short. So it could be simply a hedge of their massive okay. portfolio. Dean, but continue. carry on. Right. It would be very difficult for, for uh, an asset manager that's running $160 billion to be net short. I mean, you can't have a business model like that, um, but uh, to have amassed a hundred billion dollars of notional even against your assets, so they they are purported to have spent one point five uh, i'm sorry one percent of their one hundred and sixty billion in assets out to march that 's gigantic by any stretch if yeah. it's properly reported, it is a gigantic position. Um, and right. uh, again, I, I link it to some of his commentary. Uh, Cooperman, uh, Druckenmiller, they all have suggested that uh, Liz Warren, um, you know, emergence of her as the as the candidate would be market negative. Um, again, that's just speculation. I do think that there is a certain Pavlovian response that might be baked into the market right, right now, which is that the market right. would go down on a knee jerk reaction. And Dean, I suggest Pavlov. I think is scheduled to jump into the race here in three weeks. <laughs> uh, Dean, if I look out, and this is really important, goes to a John Farrell call last year that was brilliant, which is wait till March. There's all this certitude beaten trotted out now, and you've always been great about the game of the certitude. What's the likelihood that whatever anybody predicts in August ever happens? I mean, is there any linkage or correlation to that? I think almost none. Uh, Thank you. And, uh, I, I, you know, I know the, listen, I'm on the sell side, uh, but we don't have a requirement to put out a year-end outlook. I feel bad for the folks that do have that requirement yeah. to suggest that we have any notion as to where the S&P is going to be in December of 2020, I think is yeah. a fool's errand. It's very difficult. Um, I try to step back and look at, you know, what are the views that are especially represented in asset prices? And I think there's a couple of them One right now. Uh, right now. One is, um, as we go through, for example, 2019 has been an outstanding year for the 60-40 portfolio, right? Long stocks, long bonds. And you've seen both of these asset classes perform quite well this year right. even as they're very negatively correlated. That's an assumption, I think, that's very baked into people's portfolio construction. The other one is that uh, inflation is nowhere. It's not coming. Um, and uh, you don't have any right. risk of inflation. That may be right. I'm just here to say it's very right. impounded into asset prices. So any kind of scare on that front, I think, would be somewhat disruptive. Right. Dean Kernan, thank you so much. I learned a lot there. Really, really uh, important. Mr. Kernan with Macro Risk Advisors. I got a message in here from the advanced campaign for Ivan Pavlov, and I was mistaken. He's not running. Dean, thank you. There's like more candidates. Dean actually said something really interesting there. Yes. I, I totally agree with him. On the 2020 outlooks, what's important to me always is just just to assess where the bias is on any given day, how the consensus builds around a particular amount of yeah. things and where they're priced and how they're priced. And I think for our listeners and anyone in the audience across the majority of my programs, it's up to them programs, to plural. decide whether See to lean in to those views or, or lean out of those views. I, I would agree with that. I also think what he's had to say uh, about Bridgewater and Ray Dalio is really compelling because there was a lot of push-pull. Is this accurate? Is this not? If accurate, even if it's a fraction of the portfolio, there is a prediction that there's going to be a shift in sentiment with what's going on with the primaries. I think that's compelling. Where's consensus now? My answer is up, modest, double digits. Consensus is U.S. Yeah. growth back to trend. Yep. The global economy yeah. starts to bottom out and trade risks right. recede SPX and risk 30, assets in the first half deliver. SPX in the first 30, half. 100 right now, and, you know, they're talking 32, 3300, you know, out there. What do we know? I mean, I mean, I, I, you nailed it last year. Wait till March. This is Bloomberg. And now for the news from New York City, here is Michael Barr. John, Tom, Lisa, thank you very much. Defense Secretary Mark Esper ousted Navy Secretary Richard Spencer over his handling of the case of a Navy SEAL that angered President Donald Trump. 
Navy SEAL Eddie Gallagher was accused of war crimes in Iraq. House Democrats are starting to compress weeks of depositions, documents, and testimony into a report that is likely to result in articles of impeachment against President Trump. Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff won't rule out more witnesses on whether Trump tried to use his office to force Ukraine into announcing a politically motivated probe. The pro-democracy opposition appears to have swept to victory in Hong Kong's elections as a record turnout dealt a clear rebuke to city leader Carrie Lam and her handling of violent protests that have divided the Chinese territory. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries, I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg Tom. Yeah, Michael Barr, thanks so much. Dollar strength back nicely above 98 with Euro 110.07. We're going to see a 109 Euro. Stay with us. This is Bloomberg. Hey, y'all. Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know because my grandfather was a firefighter. And one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires. Which means always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimming. Don't just walk away or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Why has J.D. Power ranked Commonwealth Financial Network number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms for the sixth straight time? We think it comes down to one thing. You. Because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients and continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, number one in operational support, number one in compensation, number one in professional development support, and number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com and feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Start up. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. At Little we're big on those little reasons to be jolly. Like our delicious Favorina all-butter mini stolen bites for just one ninety nine. And six deluxe mince pies for just one thirty-five. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes an eye. Dell's biggest Black Friday ever is on. Save up to £700 on Windows 10 laptops and desktops. Plus up to 50% off across our award-winning monitors, all with free delivery. Call 0800 085 4878 to talk to a Dell advisor today. That's 0800 085 4878. Or visit dell.co.uk forward slash sbdeals for details on the best offers in Dell's biggest Black Friday ever. Limited time online offer. Hurry while stocks last. T's and C's apply. The S in Audi S-Line stands for many things like sporty, stylish, streamlined, and now seductively priced. Like the new Audi A4 S-Line, which you can now have from £359 per month. £2,154 initial rental. Test drive one at your local Audi center. But you'll have to be swift. The offer ends soon. Search Audi S-Line. Audi. Vorsprung durch Technik. 
With 48-month contract hire, 10,000 miles per annum, 18s and over, subject to status, damage charges may apply, no ownership. Ordered by 31st of December 2019 from participating centres. Audi Financial Services. Visit audi.co.uk. Berg Television. Here's Taylor Riggs. Imagine a database somewhere that had all of your social media accounts, email addresses, and phone numbers. Well, that is what one cybersecurity expert discovered last month. All that data for 1.2 billion people just sitting out there on a Google Cloud server. But how did it get there, and what was it being used for? To answer that, let's head over to St. Louis, where the man who uncovered the server is standing by. It's Vinny Troya, the founder of Data Viper. Vinny, I have to ask a very basic question. How did you discover this? Uh, to be honest, this is just part of a normal research process where we were just looking through open web servers to look for any uh, databases that potentially have valuable information in them. How does this breach, if you will, fit into all of the other data breaches that you've discovered? In terms of size and scope, we hear a billion people and we sort of freak out. Where does that fit in in your world? So I would say this is probably among, uh, you know, it's one of the largest that I've probably ever discovered, maybe largest that anyone has. Um, it was so large in size that the initial size that we uncovered was actually 4 billion records. And once we started to deduplicate a lot of what we found, we kind of whittled that number down to 1.2 billion, which is actually fairly significant. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Futures this morning moving higher. We go to the first word breaking news desk for today's morning call. Here's Bill Maloney. Bill, good morning. And good morning, Karen. SB futures are holding steady since the last time we spoke with Dow Futures up. 70 points. SB's gained seven, and Nasdaq futures climb by 26. The U.S. 10 year yield at 1.79%. Gold is down five, and Hong Kong rose 1.5% overnight. While well, European markets are also trading higher, led by gains in the U.K. Back in the U.S. on the economic front at 8.30, Chicago Fed, and at 10.30, the Dallas Fed. In deal news, it's been busy. LVMH to buy Tiffany for $16 billion. Novartis agreed to buy the medicines company for $9.7 billion. And Schwab to buy TD Ameritrade in a deal valued at $26 billion. In other news, Elon Musk said the Cybertruck orders have climbed to 200000 Shares are up 3.7% in the pre-market. Uber is down pre-market after losing its London license. And Deere's price start was raised to 200 from 165 over at Citigroup. Wrapping things up, Dick Sporting was raised to buy a Bank of America. Prudential was cut to sell at Citigroup. NVIDIA raised to overweight at Morgan Stanley. And Hasbro raised to buy over at UBS. Live from the First of Breaking News Desk, I'm Bill Maloney. Karen? All right, Bill, thank you. And to hear live breaking news over your Bloomberg type squawk on your terminal, S-Q-U-A-W-K. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Tom John. Uh, Karen, thank you so much. Really? Greatly appreciate that. Right now, we have to digress. John Farrow and I are just not qualified to speak of the blue box at 57th Street. So we defer to Lisa Abramowitz to bring in our guest from Hang London. Hang on a minute. You really? know more about the blue box. Are you box. kidding? You know That's more about the blue box than not. anyone on this no. floor oh, in this okay. building. Your expression just shows just reeks Please. of genuine, genuine sentiment. You, you know more about what floor is what. Anyway, I, I got don't... got more experience buying engagement rings than all of us. Oh, oh, oh. Really? oh, oh, oh tell, tell us about whoa. it. How many? <laughs> all right. So Deborah Aitken uh, joining us now to talk about uh, not how many uh, engagement rings Tom Keen has bought. Uh, she is senior analyst covering luxury goods and beauty uh, for Bloomberg Intelligence coming to us from London. Deborah, uh, it seems like the bet here is that uh, that Tiffany will offer a sort of lower entry point or at least a range for LVMH. Can you give us a sense from your perspective of how this will go down? What will be the net benefit uh, going forward for both of these companies combined? Sure. So uh, if we look at Tiffany, it's been struggling with its designer jewellery over the last couple of years. And the last quarter that it reported was minus 3% like for like, um, not doing so well at the bottom end where competition is building as one of the things. Strong dollar, not so much tourism flow. So that's all been detrimental to Tiffany. Uh, but if we look at the other end too, um, and we think about LVMH, they own the Bulgari brand, much higher end starting point, entry point. 
um, and they will be able to benefit from the low end with Tiffany to offer the younger consumer, which they talk to very well through its brands like Louis Vuitton and others, um, into into the brand better, we think, than yeah. Tiffany has done. Mm. And then also um, at the high end, we've heard Arno on the calls this morning saying they will very much be right. able to manipulate up at the higher end. they will manipulate. I know what manipulate means in my hands on my wallet. Deborah, the, the heart of the matter here is the Chinese. The Chinese are going to buy 57th Street or Bond Street or, the, or for that matter Heathrow or the Chinese are going to buy in China. Do you See any indication the Tiffany Blue Box can work domestically in China? Yes. So uh, Tiffany, if, if I pull up market share, the, one of the reasons on the other side, the flip side, would be that LVMH has 10% market share in Asia, whereas Tiffany already has 16%. And what LVMH has been very strong in doing is persuading outside of Hong Kong consumers to purchase with its store capability across the whole of China in yeah. several tiers of cities and this is one of the things its balance sheet allows it to be able to uh, market and manage and manipulate the market manipulate. more successfully what does manipulate mean sorry well using that word i think i mean it knows where the buyers are it's able oh, really? to open more stores um, to do more merchandising to transfer some of yeah. the designers in its portfolio across to this okay. brand Deborah, thank you so much. Deborah Aiken with us with Bloomberg Intelligence. Lisa, let me translate this for oh, you. No. On the back of this I month's bazaar. I know, me too. No, wait. <laughs> on the back of this month's bazaar is a full page Tiffany ad, and they're doing a Van Cleef clone thing, like the Van Cleef nex necklace that nobody can afford. Uh -huh. And it's got the T thing going. And what they're doing is that they're, they're hitting every price point, right? Yes, well, that's the key thing. And I was actually yeah. looking because I remember a rattle costing 200 <clears throat> Dollars when I got a gift certificate for a my rattle. a rattle, a silver for rattle for Charlie or for Charles for for, for great Ray idea when he, yeah. years years ago and and, and that mm. that was that was notable to me the blue box was notable yeah. and but now they have you know I assume rattles for you know hundred dollars sure they do can I can I where translate this, where this is for this you going? Can, I'll tell you where it's going <laughs> cash, cash, flow, going cash flow flies in from China. And he's going over and he's buying the rock at Tiffany. What's it like when your son buys a bigger rock than you ever bought? Is that what he did? That's what he did. 75 houses at Alfie MH. And many of these houses within Alfie MH. They have 75 sure. things with them? Yeah, and I'm not I sure many people realize that some of the houses are part of Alfie MH when they shop there. What are they? Give some names. Tag Her, Bulgari, Hublot, Zenith. All of, those, all, of those, of yeah. all of those fall under Alfie MH in the jewelry brand. Just to give you a sense of the price action, Tiffany shares ahead of the open up 5.7%. And uh, LVMH, interestingly, the ADPs yeah. are, are not are flat, basically. So it's not a detriment. And John, I did the trend back out of 2011, maybe 2010. And the pricing's out to standard deviations. And I'm interested trend. in the debt market dynamic to all of this. Bernard Arno, the chief executive and chairman of LVMH, saying in a, tele a telephone interview that it's going to be funded by bonds and the yield should stand between zero and one percent. I mean, just think but, about that. I, I think that, John, you raised an amazingly good point, which is there is no detriment to a company uh, loosening up its balance well, sheet and leveraging up. Balance sheet. Right. And, and if they incur more debt and they run a triple B okay. balance sheet, it doesn't matter. Okay. They can but buy this, growth for between zero and one percent in the bond market. In the time we've got left... I mean, I mean, there's a video to prove this. I was actually in line this weekend at Glossier. I saw this. There isn't a line I out the, the Tiffany video. door. Me there too. isn't a line out the Tiffany door. Why do these houses like Glossier, uh, Chanel, there was, where's the other? Oh, Brandy, Brandy Melville. To explain though, Glossier is this lines? big upcoming makeup brand. Tom, the thing that Glossier does, and I'm sure you experienced it, is they make you feel like it's really busy and then you get inside no. and there's like 10 people inside. I don't have experience. Well, I like that idea. I never went in the store. I got why fed up with it. I in? went into the tattoo parlor next door. There is actually a tattoo parlor. There is. Yeah, I got a new tattoo. Look at it. L I S A. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bloomberg. <laughs> This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. Shares of TD Ameritrade are moving higher this morning after news that Charles Schwab is buying the brokerage firm with a price tag of $26 billion in an all-stock deal. This creates a $5 trillion powerhouse. The corporate headquarters of the combined company will eventually relocate to Schwab's new campus in West Lake, Texas. 
Another major deal today involves Louis Vuitton owner LVMH buying Tiffany for $16 billion, the largest ever deal in the luxury sector. Uber's days in London may be numbered now that the city's transit authority has refused to grant the ride-hailing company a new license to operate there. Uber has 21 days to appeal and can continue to operate while a court considers the decision. City officials have said that Uber is not fit to hold a license, saying the company failed to do adequate background checks on drivers and report serious criminal offenses. Stock futures point to a higher open. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President and Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more or at seic.com slash seize change. Business is... C- Whatever job you're searching for, you can find it on LinkedIn. First jobs, flexible jobs, work from home on a Friday jobs, advertising jobs, accounting jobs, HR, PR, even ER jobs, Soho jobs, Shoreditch jobs, keep me away from the central line jobs, banking jobs, building jobs, never ever boring jobs, small jobs, big jobs, lunch in bar or market jobs, or even voiceover jobs, which is how I ended up recording this ad. Search millions of jobs on LinkedIn and find one meant for you. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. At Lidl, we're big on those little reasons to be jolly. Like our delicious Favorina all butter mini stolen bites for just $1.99. And six deluxe mince pies for just $1.35. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes an eye. If your ideas challenge the status quo, if you have advised people you had no right advising, if you built companies and lost companies and built them again, if you've been called a pillock, a dreamer, an innovator and a genius, if you thrive in the 11th hour, if you have blown it and completely nailed it in the same day, prepare for your next departure. Do business right. Travel Virgin Atlantic. This is someone making an online booking at Ford.co.uk using the words Ford 20 so they can service their Ford for £20 less. And this is someone who didn't get their Ford serviced. You see, at Ford, we use Ford Genuine Parts and Ford Trained Technicians. Plus, if you quote Ford 20 when you book with us online, you can receive £20 off. Book now at Ford.co.uk or visit your local participating dealer. Ford Service. No one knows your Ford better. Retail customers only. At participating Ford dealers. Cannot be used with other promotions. T's and C's apply. Search Ford Service for more information. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg Surveillance. From New York City, this is Bloomberg Surveillance for our audience worldwide. We're live on Bloomberg Radio. Your economic indicators are brought to you by Commonwealth Financial Network for the sixth straight time. J.D. Power ranks Commonwealth number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms. Visit Commonwealth.com to learn more. We're light on the data front through much of this week. For an economic indicator to look out for, though, a little bit later this evening, 7 p.m. 
Eastern, Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell speaking in oh, Rhode Island. So you. do not miss yeah. that. He will be speaking at the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce annual dinner in Providence, Rhode Island, after yeah. spending a day visiting a community development initiative with Boston Fed President Eric mm -hmm. Rosengren in Hartford, Connecticut. So look out for that. Joining us now, Michael Darda, MKM Partners. And usually with Mr. Darda, we would talk economics folded into equities. But Mr. Darda, John, looking back to the real yield and looking at the tensions trunched out, not the AAA, not the AA, not the A, but out there. That's unusual for Michael Darter. Spreads through, I think, a thousand basis points for the first time since August 2016 on triple C rated credit. For those that don't follow the credit market, that is the lowest rating within the junk debt space, all the way down to triple C's, where there's a lot of energy companies. The spreads there starting to widen out. Mike Darter, what do you see as a signal, if there is one, in credit right now? Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, it's very interesting. The the so-called triple C market, which is the weakest of the weak, right? These are not strong, stable companies with good prospects, or they wouldn't be yielding, you know, 12, 13 percent interest rates in, in an environment where, where we're below two on Treasury. So by definition, they're shaky credits. Um, but the spread between those credits and treasuries has been widening all year, and that's a bit of an outlier. So you don't really see that broadly in high yield, and you don't see it in investment grade uh, credits. But the, the triple C's have been weakening, and just last week we hit a new 2019 high on the spreads. So it's something to watch because, you know, sometimes, as the old saying goes, the, the weakest link breaks the chain. So we're on high alert for more broad-based weakening in credit markets. Don't really see it at this point, but, you know, the triple C's are definitely an outlier and something to watch here. Yeah. Mike, it's interesting. You're actually an outlier here when it comes to your take on the triple C weakness. A lot of people uh, sloughing it off is simply an occurrence of the energy sector, the weakness we've seen with certain companies there, with a couple of bankruptcies in the retail sector. What makes you feel like this is not just a, sp a slew of specific stories uh, causing this, this widening? Right. So, yeah, the, the conventional wisdom is that this is basically just being driven by energy companies. And if you remove that, you know, we don't really see problems. But I think historically, any time we've gone through a multi-month yield curve inversion, what tends to happen 12 and 18 months down the road is pretty broad-based stresses in credit markets showing up, high yield and investment grade. So that's why I'm taking this weakness in, in triple C's a little bit more seriously. In addition, we had some data come out of the Federal Reserve with the October Fed Senior Loan Survey showing lender, lending standards tightening and a big drop-off in, in, com, for commercial and industrial loan demand, also something that tends well, to be highly correlated to broader credit market trends. So we've got a couple canaries in the coal mine here, I'm afraid. Uh, Michael, let's, 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 let's uh, coordinate or correlate it, rather, out to where nominal GDP is out now. The, the theme John Farrell mentioned earlier is pretty good first half. Half, not so good second half. Do we get nominal GDP above 4% at any time in 2020? Uh, not looking like it in the first half for sure. I, I think that, you know, the best shot at that would be if the credit markets more broadly stay stable and it turns out the triple C is really indeed an outlier, then I think you could potentially start building the case for faster growth in the back half of next year. The problem is that that may not unfold. If we think about the previous inversion in the yield curve, typically it's been a three to six quarter <clears throat> leading indicator of a downturn. So the first half of next year, I think, is going to be critical. Can we get through the first half without broader signs of sluggishness morphing into, you know, potential recessionary forces. So we're going to be below 4% on nominal for the first half of next year for sure, and then we'll see. One, I, I actually uh, sent you guys a chart looking at the TIPS inflation break-even market on, on Bloomberg here relative to nominal GDP growth, and you can see the big shock downward in inflation expectations. Yeah. This year, with the growth slowdown versus where we were last year, this is as significant a shock yeah. to inflation expectations as we saw, you know, back in well, the most recent one before this was 2014 
into 2016, and that really hasn't reversed, uh, even with the three Fed well, rate cuts so far. Out of time. Michael Darda, thank you so much. And Mr. Darda, they're echoing what we heard from Mike, Jeffrey thank you, you on five-year, five-year forwards as well. Like, John, where's the inflation? It's just that simple. To that point, I will say, John Farrow, who's on Yield Curve Watch, I will say that it now is flat on the uh, 210s on the day. It had been a little bit wider, so we might be set up for a ninth straight day of yield curve flattening. Interesting to see him say that triple Cs might be a canary in the coal mine, because not many people have been willing to do that no. over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I, my history is they're a separate beast. And well, in the, past, in the past, they have been a sort of early tell on weakness, but there are so many idiosyncratic oh drink early on stories too. that I mean honestly you take a look at some of the bankruptcies that we've seen in the in the shale patch there's a lot of energy facing. in this space uh, and I think it explains to some degree why you're not seeing the weakness in broader equities because energy makes up a smaller proportion of the S&P 500 a bigger proportion of the high yield index particularly at the lower end that said downgrades have been increasing and actually there was a story in, in on, on the Bloomberg saying that downgrades by S&P global in, in the high in the high yield bond market are outpacing upgrades by the most since 2009. So it's not it's just isolated to energy necessarily. Idiosyncratic drinking. Drink. So, so this is going to be the Jacques Salou's Grand Cru Blanc de Blanc $530? Nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't so think he's so. just going to keep you're, saying you're, idiosyncratic. You're, you're kind of Anybody drink. says idiosyncratic Thanksgiving is dead. <laughs> And now for the news from New York City, here is Mark Abba. John, Lisa, Tom, thank you very much. Defense Secretary Mark Esper has fired the Navy's top officials, Secretary Richard Spencer, after Spencer went behind the back to work with the White House over the fate of a Navy SEAL accused of war crimes. There has been a rift between President Trump and the Pentagon over the handling of the case of Chief Petty Officer Edward Gallagher. Adam Smith, who serves as chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, says Trump made the situation more complicated. Well, it's terrible that the President of the United States has inserted himself in this situation because, yes, he is in the chain of command. He can do what he wants to do. But when you go that far down, you don't know what you're doing. Gallagher was convicted of posing with the corpse of an ISIS militant while in Iraq in 2017. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg announced he is running for the Democratic presidential nomination. Michael Bloomberg is the founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP, the parent company of Bloomberg Radio. More than 70% of voters turned out in Sunday's election in Hong Kong. It reflects the pro-democracy movement there and is apparently a rebuke of how leader Kerry Lam has handled the recent protesting in the semi-autonomous Chinese territory. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg Tom. Michael Barr, thanks so much. The Bloomberg NBC Sports Report. Here's John Stanshaw. Tom, the Jets had put together a couple of victories, but they were against very bad teams, the Giants and Redskins. The test was yesterday. Oakland came in six and four, winners of three straight, looking to move into a first-place tie, and the Jets won 34-3. to Not only their third straight win, but their third in a row, scoring exactly 34 points. Sam Darnold, of course, missed time early in the year with Mono. Terrific yesterday, 20 of 29, 315 yards, threw for two touchdowns, ran for another. Confidence is, you know, it's, uh, it's high. It's, you know, I think it started in practice, though. It starts with a week, a week of preparation. And, um, you know, I don't think, you know, we had, high, you know, we had a, we had a lot of confidence, you know, at the beginning of the season, even though the record didn't show. We still had a ton of confidence going into all those games. Um, for us, it's, especially as an offense, it's about executing, and we've been doing that. Darnold outplayed Derek Carr, who got pulled in the third quarter after Brian Poole's pick six. The Giants' woes continue. 19-14 loss in Chicago, their seventh loss in a row. Another quiet game for Saquon Barkley. Has not had near the season he had as a rookie a year ago in his previous game against the Jets. Barkley had only one yard rushing, and this game he had only one yard receiving. Giants 2-9. and nine. Next Sunday play Green Bay, and the Packers will not be in a good mood. They lost last night in San Francisco 37-8. to eight. The 49ers staying atop the NFC at 10-1. and one. The Patriots are 10-1. and one. They beat Dallas in the rain 13-9 at the Garden. Nets hauled off, held off the Knicks 103-101. Brooklyn's third straight win, Spencer Dinwiddie. Scored 30. Marcus Morris had 26 for the Knicks. St. John's beat UMass 
1963. Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. I'm John Stash. Yeah, Tom. Hey John, thanks so much. Michael Barr with us. Bloomberg Business of Sports. Why is the NFC East so weak? Dallas, Philadelphia is below 500, and the Giants and the Jets are worse. Uh, Redskins are worse in the world. What is it about that division? You know, there is a mathematical chance for the Redskins to still win that division because six yeah, is because everybody the else wins. is so bad. Yeah, yeah. Is it like the, nobody wants to play there? What, what's the excuse? Well, all I know is the Lions lost to the Redskins. We wanted it to help. So we lost to the Redskins? Yes, we did. Thanksgiving beckons for the Detroit Lions. This is Bloomberg. Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's environment of market volatility, Pershing's Prime Services is well positioned to support the needs of hedge funds and other alternative investment managers. Whether it's customized financing or securities lending solutions, platform access, or business expansion, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and agile enough to meet your evolving demands. Pershing helps to solve the needs of clients by advocating for them, providing unwavering strength, deep supply, and award-winning service that is at the core of everything we do. Find out what sets Pershing's prime brokerage team apart. Learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers offered by BNY Mellon's Pershing. Visit our website at pershing.com. Pershing LLC, member FINRA, NYSE, SIPC. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. This is your... For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, shop Shop small. small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small. Only by American Express. At Little, we're big on all those Christmas parties. The season to be jolly. Try our party time Indian snack selection for only $2.99. And our party time mac and cheese bites for just one ninety. Big on a Christmas you can believe it. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores exclude an eye. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. If your ideas challenge the status quo, if you have advised people you had no right advising, if you built companies and lost companies and built them again, If you've been called a pillock, a dreamer, an innovator, and a genius. If you thrive in the 11th hour. If you have blown it and completely nailed it in the same day. Prepare for your next departure. Do business right. Travel Virgin Atlantic. Hey, NFL fan. Can't watch the game? Can't be there? No biggie. With your TuneIn Premium membership, you already have an all-access pass to every team and every game in the league. Amazing, right? Steps up, floats it towards at the goal line, it's intercepted! Listen live as the action unfolds, or on demand when you can. Anytime, anywhere, all season long. Right side, it is caught, it is in for the right side for the touchdown. Search NFL today. 
You're listening to TuneIn, where you can hear all the audio you love in one place. Live NFL games, the hottest music, breaking news, and podcasts. Push play and go about your day, only on TuneIn. Decision makers to a network of news and financial information 24 hours a day. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. The Democratic chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, Adam Smith, rebukes President Trump over the firing of Navy Secretary Richard Spencer. It's terrible that the President of the United States has inserted himself in this situation because, yes, he is in the chain of command. He can do what he wants to do. But when you go that far down, you don't know what you're doing. Spencer was reportedly let go over the clash between the president and top military leadership concerning the fate of a Navy SEAL accused of war crimes in Iraq. Some late week weather woes may delay travel for some. The Northeast, though, really does begin to be the problem on the way back home. For your Saturday and for your Sunday, that's when things start to get really, really rainy, windy, and slow dying airports from Boston all the way down to Atlanta. Meteorologist Chad Myers, Charles Schwab is buying rival TD Ameritrade for $26 billion. Together, the companies would control more than $5 trillion in client assets. I'm John Trout. Why all the top-tier experts? Because business is not a magic trick. Give us a sense of the economic backdrop. Bloomberg Markets. Which financial records are these? Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. eBay is said to be near a deal to sell StubHub to Viagogo for about $4 billion. That, according to Dow Jones and eBay shares, are up 3.5% in early trading. Sources tell Bloomberg, Teva Pharmaceutical Industries and other generic drug makers have held talks with the U.S. Justice Department in the past six months about resolving a long-running criminal antitrust probe of alleged price-fixing by the companies. Charles Schwab said it would acquire TD Ameritrade in a multi-billion dollar deal. And Uber Technologies lost its license in London for the second time in less than three years. General Electric hiring Carolina Dybeck Happy as its new chief financial officer. And futures this morning are higher. S&P futures up eight points. Dow futures up 70. NASDAQ futures up about 30. The DAX in Germany is up half percent. Ten-year Treasury down 330 seconds. Yield 1.78 percent. Yield on the two-year 1.64 percent. NYMEX crude oil down a tenth of a percent or five cents at 57.71 a barrel. COMEX gold down six tenths percent or eight dollars ninety cents at fourteen sixty one eighty an ounce. The euro one point one zero one one against the dollar and the yen one oh eight point nine four. And as a Bloomberg business flash, it is eight forty eight on Wall Street. The following commentary is from Bloomberg Opinion. I'm Justin Fox, a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. Parking on New York City streets is generally free and open to all, if you can find a space. Some local officials are starting to talk about requiring permits to park on residential streets, as is done in other cities. This made me wonder, how much would the city have to charge to keep from making things worse by encouraging even more New Yorkers to park on the street? My guess, obtained via a number of methods, including the value of the time New Yorkers spend sitting double-parked in their cars waiting for street sweepers to go by, the cost of a spot in a parking garage and how much the land taken up by parked cars is worth, is that the fair value of a street parking space in most of Manhattan is between $6,000 and $8,000 a year. Hey, it's less than a dollar an hour. I'm Justin Fox. For more opinion, please go to Bloomberg.com slash opinion or OPIN Go on the Bloomberg Terminal. This has been Bloomberg Opinion. And Bloomberg Opinion commentaries can be heard every weekday at this time. And Terminal customers can read more at OPIN Go. Tom, John, and Lisa. Karen, thanks so much. Fusions of 8, thanks, Karen. Fusions of 71, pretty much near uh, where they are. Nate Langston with us. Very cool. London, on the British. Is he going to talk to us about Uber? Is Uber, Nate, is Uber the only Uber in London? No. Do they have competition? <laughs> They've got plenty of competition. They, they have, yeah. I mean, to be honest, the, the biggest competitor to Uber here is, is our traditional black cabs. Um, I agree. You, totally. You know, like yeah. they, they, they've been around for a very long time. They, I mean, they have regulation yeah. in their favor. John, from the hotel, I mean, I'll get the Uber Deluxe to go up to the McDonald's there at Liverpool Station. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I can see I, that. I, Why I, wouldn't I, you walk? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes, not five, takes five minutes. It's not safe it's to not walk safe. from <laughs> Cannon Street to Liverpool Street. Yeah. It's a five, ten minute walk. Okay, that's, you know, it's medieval. So Uber lost its license uh, in London for the second time in less than three years. Serious, Lisa, today. Well, I am serious. Okay, this is a on, really interesting question. I I, in raising an issue, is our London regulators right? Or is this an overreach that's going to really hurt people and, and hurt London overall in terms of how expensive uh, transportation is? Well, I'll give you, I'll give you the, uh, the, the balanced answer first. Um, we won't be harmed because Uber is going to appeal. And as long as an appeals process uh, is ongoing, then it can operate exactly as it does today. Uh, Uber said it's going to appeal. It can take that to the magistrate's court. If it loses there, it can go up to the, up to the Supreme Court. We could be talking yeah. years you know, with that in process. What? So nothing's going to change there immediately. What's the politics behind this? I mean, the mayor is in an election mode. Are the people outraged by Uber? Do they like Uber? What's the, the domestic politics of London and Uber? Well, Uber has changed the market massively. Obviously, it has done in many other places. Um, London is one of the few cities in the UK that has got such an iconic and very vocal uh, force, which is the black cab industry. And so anybody that you speak to on that side of things, they're very much in favor of this. They don't like Uber. Um, but in terms of what the mayor's doing, you know, he's come out in favor of TfL's actions before now. In 2017, when Uber first lost the license, he came out in support and said it was the right decision and that security and safety should be, you know, should always come first. Um, the thing is, though, TfL, and that's our transit regulator here, they're the ones that make the decision. The mayor is not here making the decision. What the mayor's been doing is adding his weight behind a decision. Um, whether that's the right thing or not to do, it depends on who you ask. You know, he is on the Labour uh, Party side of things, and a lot of the uh, black cab drivers and the unions are... Uh, they, they have a lot of Labour voters there, yeah. so there's a potential that there's a connection. But ultimately, this decision is the regulators and the regulators alone. Nate, let's talk about what the concern is on the behalf of regulators. They're concerned that at least 14,000 trips involved drivers who are not licensed as Uber drivers hacking into the app, uploading their photos to licensed accounts, and posing as Uber drivers. How big of a concern is this? Because that doesn't sound great. Well, I would, I would caution against um, th some of the drivers being labeled as, as hackers because actually what I think happened is that there was a, a vulnerability that they exploited. You know, um, They were potentially drivers that had been on the platform before and had been stripped of their license uh, because of bad behavior or what have you. Um, and Uber told me this afternoon that it actually closed this bug uh, earlier in the year and it actually told yeah. TFL about it itself and I'm, I'm, I'm looking into that now because the dates are a yeah. bit strange but, um, but yeah 14,000 trips, it doesn't seem like that many to me actually when you think about the number of trips made in, in London with Uber I want to circle back, I mean obviously the people associated with taxis are very much against Uber, I get all that but what's the mood because when I was in Paris I was shocked at the anti-Uber tone pretty much seen everywhere. Is it that way in London? Or is London more like free enterprise, Uber's okay, and others like Uber? I think in general, London is pretty open to Uber. Yeah. Um, it, it wouldn't have become one of the most lucrative markets for Uber if it didn't have enough people taking the rides and supporting the business. I think it's just you're up against such a vocal and well-unionized um, body like the black cab drivers that any time you ask any of them, they're going to make it sound yeah. like Uber's the worst thing that's ever happened to Britain. You yeah. Know. Yeah, well, let's leave it there. Nate Langston, thank you so much. Greatly, greatly appreciate an update on Uber. Uh, and this out of London, as he said, the black cabs, uh, I, Lisa, everywhere I go in the world, there's nothing like the London cabs. They're just the best. Really? They're just, yeah. But they're, they're more expensive. <clears throat> you got to pay for them, right? Uh, not that, I don't think they're that much more expensive. Why, what makes them so good? They're bigger. You can sit in them. You feel safe. The you can new sit in them. Ones, the new you heard it here. Ones. Bloomberg surveillance. Yeah. The cabs in London are good because yeah, you can no, sit in them. Well, like the Nissan here. But 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 the the, cab, the new electric cabs feel like the Bentley. You know, when I come to work in the morning, 
they go down the road. They draw down the road like like just, the Bentley that like you get Bentley taken gets to, to an organ. No, honestly, this is this is this is a really interesting uh, case here, and I think that it really raises an existential question for Uber and its expansion in Europe because if it is essentially uh, kicked out of the London market, what is its toehold? into the European market at a time when it needs expansion yeah, I think that's well for said. profitability. Yeah, well, they need a lot more than that. Looking at the stock price, and again, 28-ish, a little bit of a bounce off that 27 handle bottom. Uh, and a lot of other transactions today. Uh, Lisa, we haven't really spent enough time on Schwab Merchant. I'm going to do that with Paul Sweeney in the next hour. William Katz at uh, the Citigroup out with a really smart note on but the let's, synergies. Let's hit on it, though. The idea that Charles Schwab, uh, this is now official, agreeing to buy TD Ameritrade uh, in a deal that they talked about today. It's valued at $26 billion. It is a shift in the entire brokerage industry. And the question is, where is the growth going to be once you cut? Once you make all the cuts and strip out the costs, <laughs> well, where, where the, where's the money going to come? Yeah, where's the profit going to come from? Is Well, I love the Citigroup uh, uh, work here. The note is really quite detailed. Of course, this was widely uh, anticipated. Synergies more skewed to cost reduction than revenues yeah. versus our... Uh, that's Paul, what in God's name did I just say? It's like Greek synergy skewed yeah. to they're gonna cost, cost reduction. They're going to be able to cut costs. They're not going to be able to actually make money. Make more money or grow the revenue that much more. Yeah, I didn't see any revenue synergies talked about too much for this deal. So, And cost synergies are a lot easier to get than revenue. You ready for the single point? 18 to 20% of combined expense base. I have a cardinal rule. Anything over 15% is, oh, wow. That's a big number. So wait, does this mean a lot of layoffs? This means a lot of layoffs, Based right? on what I see in the single thing, you know. We're talking job cuts. Well, you know. Long, I love what Citigroup says, long-tailed integration. <laughs> long-tailed integration. Yeah, it, this is a cost-cutting deal. Long-tailed yeah, integration. Yeah, but, 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 but I mean, it just raises a question, though. What is the model going forward? If you do have fees going to zero, where do people make money in the asset I, management, I in the brokerage industry? This is the existential question facing well, a lot you, you, of the, Wall Street. The Ameritrade stock price, and it, it pretty much mimics the profit outlook. Uh, that was to be had. And in fairness, the bet is that you bring in clients and then they pay for all of the auxiliary services, but how much do they pay uh, and, and how much does that actually work? That is one of the key things to be seen. And also, of course, some, some talk here of regulators uh, going, wait a minute, how what business will this be? A question in the future. What we know is we see in advance in futures up five, six, seven, now up nine, down futures up 79 with a VIX, 12.32. It's important. Thanks to Dean Kernett for some wisdom. Macro risk advisors here earlier on volatility. And a VIX 10 percent This is Bloomberg. Stay with us. Something explosive is coming to the home of rugby. When Harlequins meet Leicester Tigers, expect fireworks. With tickets from £17 children and £27 adults, Big Game 12 is more than a Gallagher Premiership rugby fixture. It's London's biggest rugby party. Enjoy music, entertainment and a truly incredible atmosphere before the big game kicks off at 4.30pm, Saturday 28th of December at Twickenham Stadium. Go to tickets.quins.co.uk or search Big Game 12. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Have a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. At Lidl, we're big on all the... Christmas parties, the season to be jolly. Try our party time Indian snack selection for only $2.99. And our party... ...time mac and cheese bites for just one nineteen. Big on a Christmas can believe it. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores, exclusion I. If you're planning on driving this weekend, expect delays on the A406 North Circular Road. There'll be road